All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Massacre series. Credit to Simo and Hossman for coming up with the series. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, guys, welcome back. So today I'm playing some Chaos Pile. If it goes wrong, we'll just switch decks. It's no big deal, but this is what I'm playing today. Tons of really cool cards here. As you can see, we've got Vigom, Glow Up Bloom, stuff like that. We have tons of uh, really interesting cards that we are using today. Uh, but these are basically the cards. I'm using some things like uh, cards like Soul Scissors, and uh, we're using Ryko. We're using some of the Mech Knights, but there's no point to really go over too much of it. We're going to obviously see a lot of this stuff in the video. All right, so we just actually uh, won the coin flip. I chose to go second, and uh, this is our hand. It is absolutely an unplayable hand, and we're playing against Super Heavy Samurais. We have no shot whatsoever of winning this duel. Our, our hand is just absolutely horrific. We drew every big chaos monster. We drew Visa Starfrost, which would be good if we could summon it, and then we drew Mech Knight, which we're not going to be able to use. So this is the first game's a wash. All right, we just lost the coin flip. Our opponent chose for us to go first. Um, this hand isn't, like, super terrible, actually. We've got Soul Scissors, the Memory. Well, I mean, I guess we activate Memory, or we should have just set the Memory, honestly. Should have just set the Memory. It doesn't matter which one we summon here. Yeah, we'll summon this one. We'll summon out the Sky. Yeah, the Yellow Sky. We'll summon that out. The Yellow Star. And then we'll set the Soul Scissors. And then we'll just set this. I don't even know why I activated this. I should have just set this face down. Um, and then had an interruption on my opponent's turn. Because now this just returns to my hand. So now we just pass on this. Not not the best hand in the world. Uh, but at the same time, I, I had no reason to really... I had no reason to activate this card. If I wasn't going to Link Climb or something like that. But we have Soul Scissors, which I guess floats. We have Diana... We have Bistil, Magnema, and Mech Knight, Yellow S Star. I honestly don't think the Chaos deck is too ready just yet, but I mean, I guess we'll see how this goes. Our opponent's going to activate Pot of Desires, or Pot of Prosperity, I should say. Like I said, this is this hand is... is like I, I just don't think that the, the Chaos deck is quite ready. I've tried different like builds with it, and uh, honestly, testing against the computer doesn't really work. Raigeki, Gizmikorochi, this, this, is, this is gone, this is over. Waking the Dragons. Three Waking the Dragons in there. That's incredible. We I don't think we even have a way to pop Waking the Dragons, so I hope he picks that, because we have no way to pop it. Time Tearing Morganite. Alright, that's the card. Uh, yeah, this card's actually really, really good. I would love to pull this card. And then he's going to summon Banisher of Radiance, which coincidentally counters our entire deck and renders everything essentially useless. We uh, I don't think we can play now. <laughs> what are the chances? And there comes uh, this dude. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can actually play. That's that's actually kind of crazy. Uh, wow. Okay. So we play a Chaos deck and we play against Banisher of Radiance with Moon Mirror Shield. If I can draw a level 4 monster that we can normal summon, then I can probably out this. But that is just so crazy. Like, what are the chances now we don't draw that? Okay. I mean, I can special summon this, but like, what is that going to really do? That's just crazy. I... I I don't even know what to say. I have no out to Grandmonji right now, and then Banisher of Radiance is connected to Moon Mirror Shield. And Banisher of Radiance is preventing anything from going to the graveyard, so I, I'll never be able to summon my Bestial Magnemite. Uh, this is dead. What are the chances? This is just... <laughs> that was so unlucky. Alright, so we just won the coin flip. I opted to go second, because again, this is more of a going second deck. Uh, I don't... Other than Embodiment of Apophis, which we drew twice, most of these are like better for going seconds, and we do need the extra card. And again, we're playing against Super Heavy Samurais, and we're not, we're just not going to break this board. They're about to be Barone and this and that. Like it's just not, it's not happening. Like there's no way we're, we're n we are not beating this board. I mean, I guess I'll st I'll stick it out, but like, 
Dude, the second is good. Barone comes down with the rest of the gang. It's it's over. On a side note here, as our opponent is building his his board here and he's doing all the stuff, somebody keeps telling me, and uh, probably a few of you keep telling me to play the Mech Knights. What are these Mech Knights doing for us? I mean, other than being free special summons, they don't really they don't really accomplish much. Like I like yeah, what is like I could summon a Mech Knight and then what? It's twenty two hundred attacks, level seven. And it doesn't really work with the rest of our deck. A lot of these cards just... Uh, same thing with Frowline. Like, this is another card that seems phenomenal, right? Especially early in the Masochist Challenge. And, like, Silver and Bronze. This card seems phenomenal because it blocks attack. And it can get over any monster. But, like, realistically, when your opponent is... Like, they have Negates on board. Like, things like this just don't really do much. Uh, obviously, Tiamon is is the GOAT. He's... I, I, I If I could pull three of them, I'd play five of them. Uh, but he's really good crackdowns really good like there's some cards that are really really good But there are some cards that you guys tell me to play that it's just they're one of that Even if I draw there's a lot of situations where they're not even gonna come up appropriately anyway So I guess I'll, I'll have to see uh, how these things play out All right, so our opponent's gonna go to his end phase uh, They have a good witch I can I can't really get over anything right now to my knowledge i mean this thing can protect itself i gotta read this thing real quick okay so we have some plays here for sure so we're gonna normal summon out good witch uh we're gonna activate the effect of good witch target one face up monster book it so we're gonna book this one face down so it can't protect itself and since we haven't activated any spell and trap cards uh it would an effect that targets a samurai monster okay this dude right here so he's gonna be able to negate and destroy my monster now that's awesome so I guess that's that's over. Uh, again, this yellow star, people were telling me to play. It's it's so good, play them. I mean, it's it, it can't get over anything right now. Uh, if I try to activate Iron Dragon, this guy protects himself anyway. Yeah, he can destroy another samurai uh, samurai heavy super heavy samurai card he controls anyway, so he'll be able to protect itself. Um, I guess we just special summon this. Yeah, we just special summon this here in defense, protect our life points. Uh, we could always crack down and take this monster, so I guess that's the play we have. And then we have, uh, we'll just set this here, this here, and then we can leave the Tiamon for later. Or Tiamaton. We'll leave Tiamaton for later. And then we just have what we have on board right now. I guess we're just kind of in a, in a slower state of game. We're not too far on card advantage, considering who, you know, what we're playing against, but... It does suck that the Good Witch didn't resolve. I, I guess it is good that, you know, this we did out this thing in a certain sense. Alright, he's going to activate this. A special summon this dude from the graveyard. It's fine with me. Alright, our opponent continues to go off here. He's got the Soul Piercer off and this. Now he's going to Link or Synchro Summon. I don't know what he's going to do, but he's going to do one of them. He's going to Synchro Summon into the Ogre. So he's doing, he's doing quite a lot right now. So you can destroy all spawn trap cards that we control, which is just phenomenal. So I guess, I mean, I mean, let's be honest, this duel's over. Yeah, this, this duel's totally over. There's nothing I can, he's going to destroy my only interruptions. I mean, we could, we could sit here and try to outgrind him with Frowline, but like, I mean, who are we kidding? Like, t to benefit what? And I have to summon out this dude right now. Because I, I can't summon him any other time. So he can actually, he, and he's going to be able to protect his monster, the suit, so I, I, if I summon it here, he's going to protect it. So this one can't be destroyed by card effects, and I have a zone blocking it anyway. Uh, this one uh, is going to destroy all of our spawn trap cards. This one is now protected thanks to this discard. Uh, this card's completely dead, and Frowline, I mean, I guess we can summon it and then pay life points to protect the Frowline, but I mean, the advantage that he has is far too much. It's, it's pointless to even stick around. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent uh, chose for us to go second. Uh, we have Cubic Ascension, Raikou. This hand probably would have been first to go, better to go first. But unfortunately, uh, I mean, things things don't always have to work out. Our opponent is going to go right to end phase, which is, I mean, fine with me. Uh, we're going to try to do the best that we can here with what we have. But unfortunately, there's... What is the best that we can really do right now? Honestly, the best would probably be to actually special summon this. Probably discard the Light Pulsar right now. Put a Light in Grave. Try to get some damage in. Uh, normal summon this dude. 
Uh, we can special summon this out by getting rid of these two in hand, but I don't think that's going to be very helpful. So we're going to just go to battle phase here. Tricky's a decent card. It, it discards and stuff, but the problem with Tricky is it's a little uh, on the... It's a wind, first of all, and its leveling is a little weird. So we're going to set that, and we're just going to end phase here. Uh, there's no point to go into any links. I don't think there's any links that would really benefit us right now. I mean, I guess we can go into, like, Code Virus and then Link Climb a little more. But, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be too helpful right now. Actually, I have to add Code Virus, too. Uh, we have the Code Virus Link 3. Do I have to add that to the deck? Our opponent's going to activate Soul Sword Soul Emergence. I mean, it's pretty much the beginning of the end, if we, especially if he's searching Taya. With Soul, Soul, Sword Soul Emergence... It's, it's definitely not ready. Activate. He's going to be able to banish that to special summon a token. Alright, so our opponent's going to make Shishao. He's going to be able to search here. Uh, Taya's going to be able to send. He's going to be able to chain block. Not that it matters, because obviously we're not uh, chain blocking much. But he's going to be able to chain block anyway. And uh, this guy just drew the nuts. He's got the Monster Reborn card. He's got that available. He just searched the Strategist, which is all obviously really, really good. Uh, so he's going to be able to bring back Mo Yi and then activate Mo Yi. And he's still got the Long One in hand. So he's going to be able to get to another level 8. And then he's going to get to a uh, level 10 if he wants. Uh, yeah, level 10 Synchro Monster, which is crazy. Alright, so our opponent's now going to go into Draco Berserker of the 10 Yi. Uh, which is actually a really good, this is a generic rank 8 that's really, I mean, Synchro 8 that's really good. This I, I wouldn't mind pulling this card. This card's actually really, like, really good, really generic. Uh, he's an awesome card. And he's going to summon out the Sword Soul Strategist Long One. And obviously this card's also very, very strong. It's going to give him access to a level 10 here if he wants to. I don't think he worm locked himself in any way yet. Uh, yeah, this, none of this stuff worm locks. That horror is engraver, but I think he discarded it for something, and it doesn't worm lock anyway. The only thing they have that worm locks is the um, the Tenyi monster that lets them special summon a worm from the deck. Other than that, nothing really worm locks them. So right now he's in a really good position. He can go into Baron the Flirt here if he wants to. Essentially, we're we're kind of uh, we're kind of screwed here. Yep, he's going to go into Baron de Fleur. Or he's going to destroy our Cubic Ascension, which does obviously suck. So we're going to lose Cubic Ascension. We're going to be able to activate it soon, but I mean, against this board, I, I, I think it's 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 looking like it's over right now for us. Even though we have Cubic Ascension, he can negate it with Baron de Fleur. So I guess we'll have to see. Plus, we do have the Tsuki Knight, but we can't activate this because um, we have to control no cards in hand. So we're not going to be able to do that. And he's going to be able to attack twice. I forgot with Draco Berserker of the Tenyi. So he's going to attack with Baron de Fleur, and it's over just like that. Uh, the duel's over. Yeah, I don't I don't think this deck is ready. But let's go let's go do a little post game coverage here. All right. So unfortunately, I don't I don't believe that this deck is ready. I I would I thought that. We would be able to play it, but I mean, it's just, I, I swear to you, we're in gold, and the level of competition in gold right now is like, you'd think it was like a, 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 like a, like a final four at a YCS, dude. Everything is like Sword Soul and, and Super Heavy Samurais right now. No one is, no one is goofing off in gold four right now, so I don't think we're going to be able to play this. This deck doesn't really have an identity. You just basically just play fun cards that are lights and darks until you can get something sort of together there's no like overarching identity yet it's not like I, I like i win the coin flip i'm like do i even want to go first do i want to go second like some of these cards like chaos sorcerer does nothing going first this does nothing going like a lot of these cards don't even do anything going first so looking at this deck i don't i don't i don't i don't believe it's ready to be played also to the person who keeps telling me to play the mech knights what did you just witness they summon themselves and they have 2000 attack that's about it and going first, they do nothing, whereas our other deck obviously does a ton going first. So I'm going to go ahead, and I think this little experiment should should have proved enough. I'm going to go back to our regular deck now. All right, we just lost the coin flip. Uh, so we're playing our regular deck now. We've got Penguin Squire, Inkari Fire, Lightning Vortex, and Embodiment of Apophis. So we have a decent hand. Our opponent is playing Heroes, which is off to a terrible start. But we do have Lightning Vortex, which can oftentimes just beat heroes because they don't have a lot of stuff that can play around this. Alright, so I'm dealing with the uh, the consequences of losing a, a coin flip 
in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! He's got Phoenix Enforcer, he's got Cross Crusader, which means he's got Malicious in the loop, and now he's gonna have Plasma. Uh, he's got quite a bit of stuff. He's got Shadow Mist, and he's got the, what's it called, face down, whatever it's called there in the, uh, the, what, the mask change, his mask change face down, so we're, we're, in, we're in the midst of dealing with quite a bit here. Lightning Vortex is definitely interesting here. Because it's possible that we somehow cheese out a win here because he's only got 4,000 life points. So if we Lightning Vortex and attack, we might be able to do something here. But it just depends on what he's able to produce. Alright, so this is what our opponent has ended on. It's quite good. Um, he's got Plasma. He's going to go immediately into the Mask Change, which is fine with me. Uh, he's got Plasma. He's got Escarado. He's got... Dread Decimator, Dark Law, Standby Phase, what's his name's coming back. Phoenix Enforcer is returning to the field. Shadow Mist is going to allow him to search for probably the Elemental Hero, the the one that lets him discard and, you know, get over or whatever. He might get that one. He might add a Stratos. I don't know what he's going to search, but, yep, the one, the gain attack one, the one I said. Uh, Neos, so let's see what he's going to summon Phoenix Enforcer back. So, at least... His board is on the field here, so that's good. So we know what we're dealing with. Um, this is all fine. We can Lightning Vortex. Uh, well, anything I sent to the graveyard is going to get banished instead. So if I had... Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do here. We'll see what we can produce. So we can definitely get to the Time Thief, so that's good. We can get to a Time Thief. And outside of Time Thief, can we really do anything here other than Time Thief? Probably not, so I'm going to go ahead and activate Lightning Vortex, and I'm going to discard. I think I'm going to discard the... I don't want to banish Vigion, but I mean, I don't really have a choice here. Because I can discard this, but I don't think that's going to be very helpful. Shrink. I think we keep the... Keeping Shrink does nothing, because he's got the other thing in his hand. Actually, we might surprise him with Shrink later, so I am going to discard Vigion. I'm going to go ahead and do that, plus I know what's in his hand. So I'm going to discard the Vigion, and activate the Lightning Vortex. He's going to activate Phoenix Enforcer to destroy himself and another card, which is fine, but this will essentially clear out his board, which is really good. So he's going to destroy two cards, and then Lightning Vortex is going to get, get over everything else. Now, as amazing as that was, we don't have anything else, uh, but I'm going to try my best here. I'm going to set the Inkari Fire. He is in a, in a slow down game state, but unfortunately he's got Phoenix Enforcer, which does suck for us. So I'm going to flip some of this. Uh, change the level, yes. I'm going to reduce the level by one. Now we're going to activate the effect to flip this face down. Or flip this face up, I should say. And now in terms of our extra deck, we can go into probably Time Thief's probably the best card to go into. I know what he's got in hand. So Time Thief is more than likely the best one. Yeah, if this, yeah, Time Thief is probably the best one based on what I'm seeing here. And then we've got Shrink, and we've got the other cards. So we're going to go summon it right here. We're going to go to Battle Phase. He's down to 14. We're going to leave him at, what is that, 1,600 life. It's kind of crazy. Because we're so close, but it, it, it's 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 honestly kind of, it's seemingly close, because he's got Honest Neos, which is honestly at this point kind of a brick. And this is going to put himself back in the Spawn Trap card zone, whatever. Um, and then the Phoenix Enforcer is coming back, which is probably the scariest part of all of this. And then we're going to set this and just pass. But we could possibly cheese out a win here, but I, it's 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 kind of... I don't want to say it's like unlikely, but it's going to be tough. Because he has the Phoenix Enforcer, and the Phoenix Enforcer is going to drop our attack. And then on top of Phoenix Enforcer dropping our attack, it comes back every standby phase, which is also really annoying. He's going to Forbidden Droplets. That's the card he drew off the top, is Forbidden Droplets which was kind of lucky, and then he, uh, I mean, I, I can't really call it lucky, because if it wasn't Forbidden Droplets, then it would have been, then it would have been Stratos, which would have been worse. There's a, there's a lot of cards that would have been worse than Forbidden Droplets, so that's fine. Uh, so he's going to Forbidden Droplets, DP is going to come back, and DP is an unfortunate situation, because he's, again, in this game state, it's, it's just one of the worst cards you could possibly want to deal with, because... He's just going to be able to continuously destroy monsters over and over and over. He's going to go to battle phase, and I'm just going to I'm just going to let him attack over. It doesn't really make a difference here. Unfortunately, we do lose the monster. Uh, DP has an effect to reduce our attack. On top of that, uh, you know the forbidden droplets. So we have multiple cards. He's going to destroy two cards, and we're going to lose one of the monsters. I mean, we're going to lose one of our spawn trap cards here. 
And this is where it didn't really matter. Even if we even if we had kept Vijam, it wouldn't have really mattered. He's going to destroy this card, which actually matters more, the Apophis, the Apophis card. And I don't believe that there's anything that we can draw here that would help us. Ooh, but he comes back in the standby phase. Yeah, DP comes back in the standby phase, and it's it's pretty much over. There's nothing that we can do. Even if we cut his attack, um, it, whether we cut his attack or it, it doesn't really matter. We, we lost this duel. That sucks. That really sucks. All right, our opponent won the coin flip again. Today's been like a really unlucky start to all of this. He's going to go for the Nadir stuff. Um, yeah, this, it's been outrageously unlucky. Like, our first deck did nothing for us for several games and we've been playing non-stop like just real decks we have not played like oh i'm just uh, it's my first day on like yeah it's not like we have not played on oh, I'm, I'm here to play my dark magician deck labyrinth all right so now i'm out of here we have not played any not like, not real decks everything has been like tier three and above it's actually been kind of crazy all right so we just lost another coin flip here uh our opponent has a dark magician mate and he's got the karibo here this is kind of like you ever see like a, a hungry animal and there's like an a there's like another animal is maybe like limping a little bit right we're like the wolf and we see a limping antelope and this is this is like exactly what you want to see he's setting a monster things are looking down this is great this is this might be our opportunity to strike this is great like uh there was a recession there's there's a there's a there's a beat up house on the on the edge of the road that that might be going up for sale soon like things are things are things are looking up right now let's, let's see what we got to do here we're going to small world for sure we got to get to something quickly um golden is gone we don't need golden i want to get to something useful a uh, goblin bird wouldn't be too bad uh but neither would any this 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 or this are all fine right now so any one of these would be helpful right now. I think I'm going to go with... That's 15, that's 15, that's 15. Definitely don't pick that. Uh, I want to get the Goblin Burke probably, right? Is that what I want to get to? Because then I get to Special Summon another one. Uh, but then Goblin Burke dies to affect Valor. So we don't want to do Goblin Burke. We're going to go for this dude. And then... I mean, honestly, we can just... Yeah, we're going to go for this dude right here. And then we're going to be able to get to all of the spellcasters that special summon themselves. Or we can get the barrier statue. But barrier statue I don't think is too great right now. Um, actually, barrier statue right now isn't too bad. Because I don't know what he's playing. So it's it's probably more of a solid choice to just go into barrier statue. Because we have the Paleozoic Diagnomiscus to back ourselves up. Uh, so we're going to go to barrier statue. And we're going to go normal summon. This is the bread and butter of our deck. I don't, I don't care what this is. If it's an Ash Blossom, I'll take the 800. Electromagnetic turtle. I'm still taking 800. So we're going to set Paleozoic Dinomiscus. We're going to set there. Can only be one. We're just going to pass here. Uh, again, this is like the bread and butter of our deck. Plus, now we have Witch of the Black Forest. This is another card I'm very excited about. Uh, right now, this is this is looking like a doable situation. We've got elect I don't know if we're dueling against Yugi. He's got Electromagnetic Turtle. He's got the Karibo. This is what we want to see. After like six straight games of nothing but meta, this is what you want to see. It's going to set a card. Okay. Yeah, this is what you want to see. Uh, end phase. No, no need. No need. We, we've seen everything we need to see. We don't need to go to... Oof. That's a good one. That's a good one. That is a good one. But it's a very good one. Uh, we can't special summon it anyway, so it doesn't even matter if it's good or not. So we're going to normal summon out the familiar possess. We're going to go to battle phase. Let's start attacking. We'll see if our opponent has any battle traps. He does have the Electromagnetic Turtle. I gotta keep that in mind, because that can end battle phases at any time. Like, right now, he can end the battle phase. It'd be dumb to do it, but he can do it. So, he's gonna do that, and we're gonna we're gonna pass here. We're good to go. We No need to really do any more thinking. Alright, they're gonna go straight to the end phase. I'm not even gonna bother activating anything, especially since, you know, it doesn't help us right now. They're gonna go straight to the end, and Memory of an Adversary is a good card. With Barrier Statue, is a great card to have. Normal summon out the Witch of the Black Forest. We don't have any fire monsters, so we can... I mean, we can go into that, but I don't I don't actually want to pop his back row because he hasn't used it yet. So I'm going to go to Battle Phase, and he has the Electromagnetic Turtle to end the Battle Phase if he wants to right now. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. So we're going to go to Battle Phase, try to attack a couple of times, and, yep, attack the third time here. He's... We, I mean, we've got the Life Point lead. We've got a few good cards here. Again, I don't know what he's playing, so at any point, things can go very sour for us. Like, we're a Harpy's Feather Duster and a normal summon of 1,100 or more is, is basically... Can undo our entire 
the big smile on my face right now. He's going to set another card, okay, which again is concerning, but not concerning enough for me to do anything about it because there's face down cards and I can't do anything about them anyway. Um, Out Emancipator Analyzer. I'm going to switch this to defense and I'm actually going to go to battle phase with my other monsters just in case this is some kind of a mirror force, something we don't want to see. Uh, he does, like I said, okay, Magician's Combination. That is fine. That is fine by me. That is fine. We're going to activate Analyzer. We're going to hope our opponent has a negate. Nope, they don't. So we're going to try to bluff them. Yeah, you can't use combination with Barrier Statue because none of the, obviously, none of the Dark Magician cards are fire. So now we go to Battle Phase. He has the Electromagnetic Turtle to stop the attack, but it's fine with me if he stops it because, again, you know, he kind of has to stop it right now because, yeah, he, he's got to stop it. So he's going to stop it, which is fine, and we're going to go and end here. Yeah, we're gonna go end phase and this should be good for me and we do have a few ways to stop an attack on the barrier statue of memory and we have paleozoic dinomiscus so if you normal summons anything we can stop it Oof, we got it okay see these are the kind of duels that we would expect in gold that we're happy to see in gold uh yeah and we get a cut scene here we go they're treating us here we got this awesome deck box we've got is this complete it looks complete no it's not complete it's not shining in the middle now it's complete and we've got this card. Uh, should I be able to use it? Should I not be able to use it? Honestly, the card's not good anyway. You have to have 25 or more cards in your graveyard and this card can be can basically special summon itself and then while uh, your opponent has 25 or more cards, this gains 2,500 attack, which makes it 5,000. Uh, as cool looking as the card is, unfortunately, it's not that fantastic of a card. It's actually kind of a bad card. So we're not going to be able to use it in our deck even if we were allowed to use it in our deck we're not going to be able to use it and then we've got a legacy ticket all right let's open this master pack it's a you are i mean we definitely deserve it after all those losses um i, I just want to see some cool new stuff let's see uh we've got worm not going to help us another copy of diana for the chaos deck that is not ready yet enlightenment um let me see what this does uh, this card's actually not the worst Ever. It can let a spellcaster attack twice. Uh, we already have this dragon shell monster. Envoy of Chaos might be going in the chaos. We really need to, like, yeah, I don't think this is going to go in the chaos deck yet. But if this card's in your graveyard, you can banish a light and a dark in your graveyard, add this card to your hand. I mean, that's that's a lot to do. You banish two monsters to add one monster. And that's kind of the problem, is we have no ways to really put things into the graveyard. Brave Eyes Pendulum Dragon. One Pendulum Dragon monster, one warrior monster. Do we have a way to summon this? I don't remember. Do we have a way to summon this? I don't think that we do. This is actually not that bad. One Pendulum Dragon, which it, there's not that hard, and a warrior. So this is like written for our warrior dragon deck, right? This is like made for it. But unfortunately, I don't know that this is actually summonable. Because again, we don't have, we don't have polymerization or anything like that. And then we've got a punk card, which I don't believe, again, is usable. Let's see what this UR is. Dragon Maid Shuao. One Dragon Maid monster, one level five or higher Dragon monster. She, is it, uh, Dragon Maid Shu, is that, is, that, is that how it's pronounced? I hope that's right. Uh, dragon Maid monster and a level five or higher Dragon. Again, I don't think this is summonable. We, we do not have... I, we might have the Dragon Maid... Fusion spell, we might have it. I have to go check. We might have the Dragon Maid Fusion spell. I have to go check, but that's not that's not the worst card in the world. All right, let's open this Legacy Ticket. Uh, the Legacy Tickets have been absolutely great for us. They've actually, I can make the argument the Legacy Tickets have been better than the Master Packs, uh, ratio-wise, because you get so little cards. Secret of the Bandit, uh, Select Inflicts Battle Damage, Discard Random Card. I mean, that's not really all that great. And then we've got uh, Return Soul. Yeah, return three monsters destroyed this turn from the graveyard to their owner's deck. I don't think that's going to be really all that usable either. Uh, so not not the best legacy cards. All right, so these are our Dragon Maid cards. So we actually do have the Dragon Maid Changeover, which is the fusion spell. Let's see, fusion summon one dragon, fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. So it can be any dragon. It doesn't actually specifically have to be... It doesn't specifically have to be a Dragon Eight monster that's summoned, so that means that we can we can also summon that uh, Odd Eyes monster that we just pulled, the Brave Dragon or whatever the one that requires a Pendulum Dragon and a Warrior monster. So we can actually summon that with this card, and then we can target a Dragon Eight monster we control. Yeah, target a Dragon Eight, return it to the hand, and then 
add this card to the hand that effect is also really so both of the effects are really really good uh we also have tidying we also have welcome which isn't that good but this card is actually the jimmy changeover is good uh obviously tidying is good we have this is the only dragon main monster that we have so we would have to hard draw this because we don't have any way to search it right do we have a way to search it is this uh search it all right so this card basically can summon it from the graveyard or hand but it can't search it so overall like this card is technically summonable in our dragon deck so i i you can make the argument this is worth playing but again the issue with this is it negates it, it negates your opponent's card uh, but this is returned to the extra deck and then we can special summon a house dragon maid from the extra deck so basically what this card does is 3500 attack and if it's negated, it can. If your opponent activates anything, we can negate it, return this to the extra deck, and then spark summon a house dragon maid. But the issue is we don't have house dragon maid, so that effect is kind of dead. So if we do negate anything, we just lose the monster forever. Um, also, in terms of our dragons, I'm going to look up dragons and fusions because we might have other dragon fusions that might be good. Uh, let's look at it. Let's erase dragon maid. Yeah, we have some others here. So we have the pendulum dragon plus warrior so this might be decent if we have decent pendulum dragons here i have to check uh we can make thousand dragons not happening two photons we can make photon lizard if we ever you know go in that route starving venom a dark and a pendulum monster this isn't impossible any dark any pendulum this is summonable but it's not the best card in the world but this is definitely summonable and then this i don't think is legal i think this was um this is a free card that we get at the beginning but we actually can make odd eyes and pendulum dragon and a pendulum monster we can actually make this in uh our we can also make this so this is actually kind of interesting so maybe we can we have to look at what dragons that we have available because both of these are technically summonable uh this needs to be summoned with critias fang of critias so this can't be summoned for us because um, we have claw of hermos but overall we have a few cards that we can summon off of the dragon may change we have one two and three but it, it requires some really specific things to be in play for them to be usable but again if we just play a lot of them i guess it's not the end of the world right so if we play this and this and this and this we're going to eventually get something that is usable so just out of curiosity these are our dragon pendulum monsters which are the this uh vector pendulum i didn't even know he's a dragon he i, I guess now that i look a little closer he does kind of look like a dragon but i mean he you know he's, he just looks like a guy and then we've got also the supreme king odd eyes dude which is all both an odd eyes and the dragon so simultaneously two things but we don't have a lot of pendulum dragon monsters but that card can still work in our dragon warrior deck uh, again i just have to kind of have to look at it right now we're just kind of low on the appropriate targets to use all this stuff but it, it's not the worst situation in the world it's definitely it, it definitely was not the worst pull in the world all right <clears throat> next game uh let's see what we draw it's not a bad hand at all we've got run ryu we've got crowley so we've got time thief so that i mean again this is this was all well, this is what's awesome about the deck is that we have we have a direction that we want to go every single time we can go into time thief which is usually the best one to go into turn one but perhaps if we pull some of the other code breaker stuff we can start going into that stuff overall really not a bad hand whatsoever uh, and then we've got three trap card or essentially messenger of peace and two trap cards i'm going to go ahead and put i want to say i want to actually i'll we we kind of have to go all or nothing with our deck only because our deck isn't super like we don't really have you know a grind game we don't have advantage so if we don't put everything we, we just lose so if they have the harpy's feather us do they have it but you know it, 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 if they don't have it then Potentially we have some good stuff that we can do so we're gonna activate time thief and then we're gonna grab something off the top It's a spell. That's great. They're playing dark magician um, Overall our hand is actually well not our hand But our cards aren't so bad with dealing with dark magician right now uh, I am glad that we grabbed that circle off the top of their deck because circle is an Annoying card to have to deal with it's probably out of all of the dark magician stuff circle is easily the most annoying card out of all of them because Eternal soul is definitely annoying, but if we out the eternal soul then everything else is fine, but circle is like Every single turn banish 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 that that really gets uh, difficult to deal with I uh, Don't have a reason to really steal this magician's rod. He's gonna add circle anyway um, Yeah, I can't I, unfortunately. Yeah, this is this is this is a frustrating part of his 
of his deck, it's the the circle. He's gonna search for Eternal Soul. Uh, he's gonna gonna search. He's gonna add it off the top of circle, and then he's gonna activate Magician Navigation or uh, Magician Soul. Which this sucks because there's nothing that I could particularly do about this. He's gonna be able to special summon out Dark Magician now, and he's gonna be able to target and banish something. Hopefully, he targets Time Thief because then I can get off the board. He's gonna target Messenger of Peace. He's also going to draw a card off of this card right here. This is another card that I would love to actually pull, Piercing the Darkness. Hopefully we pull it. I don't have anything that I can really activate right now, so I'm kind of just okay with this. Now what does suck is he's going to go to battle. I am going to... He's going to activate this to gain attack, a ton of attack. I'm actually just going to go ahead and crack down. And the reason I'm going to crack down is because if he doesn't have a Dark Magician in hand, then we're actually in a really good situation because if he doesn't have a Dark Magician in hand, then that Eternal Soul is totally dead. So hopefully he does not have the Dark Magician in hand. So we're going to take it with our fingers crossed that he doesn't have a way uh, to get access to Dark Magician. Because the, the way the new Dark Magician deck is played, they don't really search out Dark Magician like they used to. It's crazy because a lot of builds actually recommend that you don't even play more than one copy of Dark Magical Circle, but... Unfortunately, this guy does play multiple Dark Magical Circles because he, he searched one, he drew the other. He's about to end his turn, so this is one of our only forms of advantage. So we're going to activate the Magician's Circle, we're going to draw a card. I'm not going to activate the second one because he's in the end phase anyway. That's, that's not bad, Small World's not bad. Uh, let's draw, we got Threatening Roar, again, not bad, not great, not bad. Activate the Time Thief to get a card. He's going to activate Magician's Combination, he doesn't have Dark Magician Girl in Graveyard, so... It's not super relevant, but I guess he might have uh, other things in circulation that he's getting ready to activate here. We're going to get a spell card again. That's quite good. Then he's going to activate... Oh, Magician's Rod to Tribute to add back to hand. Which isn't bad. Okay, so I there's, there's a risk that I can take here. There's a risk that I can take here, and I don't know which one to do. So I can just attack now, or what I can do is... Yeah, there's two things I can do. I can either attack now, and then hopefully he activates something, and then I respond with Time Thief. Or I can... I'm just going to do that. I'm going to attack now. I'm going to attack now. Because um, the optimal thing to do is to get into a barrier statue right now. Because we want to draw really badly. We want to draw super badly. Because if we get to draw, and we draw into any monster, we can probably get to barrier statue. And if we get to barrier statue, we can actually get to... Then we can protect the barrier statue and we pretty much win this duel if we can get the barrier statue. So we're going to activate this. We're going to detach one. We're not going to detach the others. We're going to draw. Okay, that's good. So now I think we can get to the barrier statue. So now we activate small world. Hopefully he doesn't ash the small world. Okay, he's not going to ash. Uh, we're going to reveal this. We're going to banish uh, something that probably we have to banish this. TM on. This shares what with barrier statue? Just the level four, right? It's not a dragon, it's not a dark. Okay, so it just shares this. We could also do Goblinburg. And Goblinburg, which one? I, I would say Tiamon is probably better for us in the long run right now than Goblinburg. So I'll banish the Goblinburg. Uh, this shares nothing with the barrier statue, right? Yes. And now we reveal that. We get to the barrier statue and we normal summon out the barrier statue. And uh, now, even if he does draw Dark Magician, it, he can't get to it. So we're going to normal summon out Dark Magician. I mean the uh, barrier statue. And we're going to set the Threatening Roar. And we're just going to pass here. And this should be, this should be theoretically good enough. Uh, because we know he's got Eternal Soul set face down. And he does have mag uh, Magician's Rod that he can normal summon. But it's not the end of the world because we've got the Threatening Roar again. Alright, we're going to get a monster off the top. It's Dark Magician Girl. So now he can't, at the moment, he can't do Magician's Combination. So at least that is good. He can't, he can't resolve Magician's Combination if we have his Dark Magician Girl. Alright, he's going to normal summon search with rod. He's going to get to servant. Soul servant's pretty good. He can place anything and then it'll let him draw. He's going to go to battle. We're going to, yeah, quickly click on battle phase. We're going to activate the threatening roar. So we do not want him to get over our barrier statue right now. Now we have a few turns here. So we have our turn and then his turn where we can hopefully get to a trap card. Because the trap card, if we get to a trap card, it changes everything. Because uh, then we can put... The Magician's Soul on the top of his deck. That changes completely everything. Then he has to, like, it's difficult for him to get into it. He's going to reveal and then get to one. He can actually get to uh, Magician's Souls, but he can't really use Magician's Souls right now. Magician, all right, Magician's Rod. So he's going to search another one, which is quite smart. He's going to put a card back. 
He's gonna, he can summon that next turn if he wants to. But right now, he can't even go into Artem. Can't even go into Artem, preventing him. We don't have anything to activate here. Again, our goal is to get a trap card. If we get to a trap card, that's perfect. Two Unbreakable Spirit is not that awesome. But we're going to activate this. Hopefully, again, a trap card would be... And it's a monster. Obelisk the Tormentor. Wow, okay. Um, uh, no matter what we do, we're going to lose this barrier statue. So, unless we get a trap card off of his deck we're losing this barrier statue uh we're gonna attack over this it might be okay though because we have multiple unbreakable spirits so if we get our life points if we get his life points low enough it might be totally fine double unbreakable spirit in the damage step might be enough to win no matter what he has he does of course have the piercing in the darkness so we do have to wait you know, we have to watch out for that because that what does that do doubles kane's attack equal to your opponent's monster that can you know that can do quite a bit of damage also uh we're gonna activate obviously time thief hopefully we get a trap card trap card is totally ideal if we get that we can basically close things off here now we got a spell card super poly that is an interesting card topic it's gonna normal summon and use magician's rod and he's gonna search out the magicians of secrets of dark magic you can search that out I'm gonna go to battle phase let's see <clears throat> obviously there's nothing i can do here this is gonna resolve this attack Time Thief is still in the loop, which is a good thing for us, because Time Thief, he has a spell and he has monster. Right, he's going to send Polidium Oracle Mahad to, I guess, Special Summon Souls? Because, yeah, he can't Special Summon anything else. He did waste his battle phase, which is good, and then he's going to Secrets of Dark Magic, which is fine with me. I mean, I guess, I, I fine with me. Yep, he's going to fuse those. Oh, he has multiple Dark Magicians. I... That's the thing about, like, these players that are, like, what, are they, what would you call them, like, newer players? Um, or maybe not even newer players, like, anime players in general. Like, they always have so many copies of things, it's almost kind of frustrating to deal with. Uh, because they, they, they play so many, like, they play multiple Dark Magician girls, multiple Dark Magicians, multiple Mahads, and then it's almost like they never brick. It's, it's incredible. They play all of these cards that are theoretically bricks, but they never brick. They're going to activate... And they're going to target my uh, Redoer, which is actually fine. Now they're going really, really plus. They're going to be able to draw. They're going to be able to do a ton of stuff. Uh, so this is going to allow them to banish. This is going to allow them to draw. This is going to allow them to draw again. But it's it's fine because we're going to activate the effect of Time Thief to banish itself off the field. And yeah, we're going we're gonna to banish it off the field. And he's going to use the Magician's Combination, which is... That kind of sucks for us. So we're going to lose our Time Thief here no matter what. Yeah, we're going to lose Time Thief. They're going to summon Dark Magician Girl. And does this negate activation? Yeah, negate the activated effect. That sucks. Um, yeah, there's nothing I can do here. There's nothing that I can do. This took a turn for the worst very quickly. Uh, we drew multiple Unbreakable Spirits, which obviously don't do anything. That Magician's Combination is no joke, and this does nothing for us. And we can't even use it. I mean, our, yeah, there's nothing, I'm looking at this, there's not much that we can do here. We can, we can, yeah, yeah, there's not much we can do. I mean, I, I'm going to pass and hope that he somehow misplays, but this, this duel is out of control. Yeah, he's going to activate the Eternal Soul. He's going to bring back a monster. And he's going to activate this to banish, to banish the middle one. And he's going to draw a card. Piercing the Darkness is a really good card. I'd love to pull Piercing the Darkness. Yeah, unfortunately, that one slipped completely out of control. Nothing we could really do. Again, our deck is kind of lacking advantage, but, I mean, what can you do? It, it, it happens. All right, we just won the coin flip here. Our hand is... It's it's a little tough to look at, but it's, it, it's, it's solid hand. It's a solid hand. We've got multiple interruptions, and we steal one of his monsters during the battle phase. So it's not bad. The only thing is Penguin Squire is kind of dead right now because we didn't draw any, like, summons. But outside of Penguin Squire, like, it's it's a sol it's actually a solid hand. It's, it's a pretty good control hand here. Galaxy Wizard. Once per turn, increase tribute, add one galaxy. Okay. I can actually use the Chalice right now to leave this stuck on board but i mean i'm just gonna let him add a galaxy card it's not the end of the world if he adds it i don't know if we're going to be able to do this one but i'll, I'll try my best 
I'd rather I'd rather save the chalice for something else, but I, I it's a little tough because actually there can only be one is not the best card in the world against this deck because un unless they're using like the card that summons the tokens, they do have a lot of different types. They have spellcasters, dragons, and they've got uh, machines, and they've got warriors. So they've got four different main deck types, which is already kind of tough to deal with. But I guess I'll wait till our opponent screws something up, and then and then possibly do whatever I have to. So if he summons another galaxy soldier right now, then I'll go ahead and there can only be one. But it's very possible that he just because because this he is playing pure galaxy, he could you know summon something that doesn't do that. So he's going to summon the uh, warrior, which is the photon, and then he can normal summon a light in addition to that. And if it's a warrior, then we can possibly get rid of it. He's going to add whatever that is. That one was a spellcaster, spellcaster, of course. So now he can extra normal summon. And if this is normal summon, you could target in your graveyard. Which I imagine is going to be the wizard, but we're going to go ahead and activate. There can only be one right now to prevent the wizard from coming out. So that's like, we've already gotten one negate here, which is pretty good. You basically, yeah, we have our free negate off of, because we always try to, you know, we, we're always trying to, whenever we use there can only be one, we try. I want to try to use it in a way where we get a free interruption plus a floodgate activation out of it. So we prevented his card from resolving, plus now he has to deal with the floodgate. He, can, he can't summon warriors, spellcasters, or machines, but he can summon dragons, which a lot of the extra deck cards in Galaxy Eyes happen to be dragons. So he can actually escape this situation right now. Oh no, he's not going to escape this situation. He's going to quit on us. Great. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm, I'm very happy with that. The Dark Magician game, game, game was definitely rough, so uh, I'll take that win. All right, so for our stuff, we got two Legacy tickets, and we've got Leo Wizard. Again, this is a card I don't believe is in the TCG. I don't remember seeing it. There's a lot of cards like that, but yeah, I don't remember seeing this card ever. All right, let's open up this Master Pack. It is glowing. It is glowing. That's nice. Um, yeah, last time we pulled the Dragon Maid card, which didn't end up being super useful, but... Four level fives, I think we already have this too, so we can't even, we haven't used it all this time. I don't think we're going to keep using it. Uh, this isn't up to twice per turn. You target a Constellar monster in the field, and then increase its level or decrease its level. It is a level four, it's 1800 normal summon, and it can make its level go up or down, so it could be level three or level four. Honestly, it's not the worst card in the world. Christron, there's a generic card, Christron Amatrix. This card is generic level five has an okay effect and honestly not the worst card in the world stat wise pretty good actually 25 for a level five is actually kind of good i don't i mean do we have any level one tuners that are worth playing i'd have to check but that's not that's not actually that bad uh void cauldron uh this card is kind of okay for a void like uh in infernity deck it's not the worst card in the world Gotham's second call i don't believe that we have enough x saber cards we do have an x saber synchro monster uh, but we don't, this is like a very X Saber specific card. I don't think we can play that. Green Turtle Summoner, it's another spellcaster. Target one monster your opponent controls, destroy it. So essentially, this is like Man Eater Bug for spellcasters. It's level three. I don't know if we're going to really be able to play this. We got another Noble Knight. Equip only to a warrior. It gains 1,000 attack during each standby phase. It loses 200. Why? Uh, this, this card, honestly, is not a bad card. This is 100% going in the warrior deck. I think, well, again, this is kind of like, it's, it gives a warrior a thousand attack and it can basically bring itself back. I really have to look at that warrior deck. I think it's gotten a lot better because we have a like Gawlenberg and that Colonel guy. So I have to really look at that deck. That deck might even be better than the deck we're playing right now. Um, so I'd have to definitely look at that deck. And then for our super, we have Vampire Sucker. Wow, that's actually a good card. Two zombie monsters. That is actually... We are pulling a lot of zombies, but not like... This is actually like in the A tier of, of zombie monsters, but we've been pulling a lot of like C tier and B tier zombie mo like zombie monsters in general. But this is, as far as zombie monsters goes, this is really good. If we pull Zombie World, we really have something something going here because we have, we've got the Glow Bloom. We have this thing right here. Uh, we have Frau Line. Like we have some decent vampire stuff so i'd have to take a look at it but that's it's really not a bad pull and this can let you tribute your opponent's monsters when you summon a when you summon a, yeah you can let you can tribute your opponent's monsters and then uh you use their monsters as tribute to summon your own big uh uh zombie monster and then it, uh, also it, it can like bring back like a ash blossom and let you draw so this card's actually kind of good 
All right, let's open these legacy tickets, which again have been quite good for us, possibly better than the regular packs. A lot of our best like boss monsters have been out of there. Not a bad card if we pull Ready Fusion and then Sync Cybernetic Zone. Not the worst card, honestly. Not the, not, that's nah, kind of bad. <laughs> it's kind of a bad card. Uh, but this is actually really kind of good. Again, if we pull Ready Fusion, this is a really good card to pull. And then let's see what we get out of our other one. Yeah, not a bad... I, Ready Fusion's but Ready Fusion's an ultra rare, which kind of sucks. Uh, Predator, this is one of the worst Predator Plants, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's one of the worst. Stat-wise, it sucks. There's so many things. I don't even know why this is here. Why is this... How did this get here? Why is there a, a Predator Plant monster in here? I, I don't know. This is like... Why is this here? Uh, yeah, not a great card. Uh, and uh, yeah, I did a tier list for Predator Plants. It's not one of the better ones. And then we've got Lightning Blade, 800 to any warrior. Uh, this is a worse version of the card that we just pulled, which is the Noble Knight card. But this is just, I have no idea. Can somebody explain why this is here? Why is why is there a random Prada plant in here? All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is playable, which is good. Uh, it's playable. We won't end on anything crazy, but it is playable. I'm going to activate Analyzer. We're going to get Ash. Thank God. This is, why, this is the exact reason why I activate it. It is, it is a card that cannot do anything. It cannot do anything. It doesn't have an effect uh, because we don't have any other rocks. But somehow it does get ashed and veilered and all of that other stuff. I'm going to play hopefully into the Tiamon columns here. So hopefully our opponent summons right here. And that way we can use Iron Dragon Tiamaton. And they're going to activate Upstar Goblin. They have Upstar Goblin and they have Sleeves with Ray on them. This is Sky Strikers. We're going to pack our stuff up. Why does it have to be Sky Strikers? I don't want to play against this. Yeah, this is this is one of those decks. I just, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I know some of you don't want to, want to hear me say this, but I, I, I can't beat this deck. Like, I can't beat this deck. Like, there's nothing, I, I can't. That and Labyrinth, I can't beat them. Not with this deck. I, I just can't. They are a control deck that builds advantage over time. Our deck has no advantage whatsoever. Our best bet is to like... Is to like either floodgate our opponent and beat them in like one, two turns real quick. Demoralize them. That, that's what our deck does. Our deck cannot beat a grind game against a deck that... That, that destroys two cards and draws two cards and searches and draws. Like, it, we can't do it. All right, we just won the coin flip again, luckily, and we've got a decent hand here. We've got Goblinburg, Ron Ryu. I'm sorry, not Ron Ryu. Right, yeah, Ron Ryu. Yeah, we're going to activate the effect of Goblinburg to summon the Ron Ryu. Hopefully, our opponent does not have an not, it doesn't have an effect veiler or something like that, so we're going to summon that out. I'm going to go straight into the th Time Thief, and that'll be right there. Summon it straight in the middle column. And then we have, I'm going to go ahead and just leave uh, the Unbreakable Spirit in hand. I'm going to set Paleozoic and their canola. So I'll set these two and I'll pass and I'll just leave it on this. And it should be pretty decent. Unbreakable Spirit, I'll just leave because again, Paleozoic is good. No, I want to discard for it. So I'll just leave it there. So now we're going to activate the Time Thief to get something off the top of his deck. Hopefully it's something useful. Hopefully it's a spell or a trap. You always hope for a spell or a trap. We're going to grab a spell and they're playing Salamangrate. Okay, and they're playing a Salamang... This card, which is actually quite shocked. No one really uses... Uh, but it's good. Actually, this is really good. If they don't have back removal, we probably can win this duel because we have There Can Only Be One and There Can Only Be One is an auto win against this deck. But if they have spell and trap removal, this can be a little tough. Because they actually... They can play around There Can Only Be One, but they need to get to like Falco and stuff. Uh, but it's a little bit of a, a difficult situation for them to get to. But we, we also... Also have if I see a Falco, I'll get rid of the di uh, the uh, Dino Miscus. I believe it's Falco, the one that outs back row. Yep, they're gonna add Gazelle. Gazelle is fine with me because again they didn't go first, so it can be a little tough for them. They also have this is who's Jack Jaguar. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and on summon. I'm gonna activate. There can only be one on summon uh, because I want to lock our opponent into this one Jack Jaguar. I don't want him to have the ability to search anything, so I'm going to leave it just right here. I'm going to leave him stuck on this. If he, I don't know if he, they do play the trap card that lets them pop cards, which if he draws that, he draws that. By all means, if he draws it, he has it, he has it. There's nothing I can do. That's going to let him gain 500, which isn't enough. That'll put him at 23. Uh, he's got this thing here too. He can pay life points. And do something. I remember. Oh, he's gonna scoop. He's gonna scoop it up. Awesome. We've got the top 
solid. I don't know what to say. Solid. All right, now let's see. We've got three legacy tickets. Let's go pull something cool. All right, we're going to open our master pack, which is another UR. I don't know. It could be a useful one. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's a matchup dependent. We kind of got lucky there, but what can you do? That wacky magic. Uh, I don't really know if that's usable. We don't have a lot of spells that we really use, so I don't, I don't know if that's going to work for us. We've got one of the worst of the Dark World cards, so that's not going to be usable. A Katakuri card. Okay, I don't think it's going to be usable because we don't have enough Karakuris, but it's not the worst card in the world. We've got Consolation Prize. Oof. This is kind of an interesting card. This is the type of card that again early on like early in the series one million percent i would have used this but this is so specific this has to have been a recent card because it number one has an fa on it so i think it's got to be a decent like reasonably recent card but yeah this isn't that like this is a weirdly interesting card any card is sent to from hand to graveyard target one of them special summon it so if our opponent discards something we can take their monster if we discard something like for the Paleozoic or something like that, we can bring it back for free. It's an interesting card, but I don't know if it's super usable for our strategy. Worm Falco is, yeah, it's not super usable for us. And is I was going to say, is this another one? But no, it's not another one. It can tag directly and then add a Watt win. This is actually one of the better Watts. Interesting. It's only, it's only, an, it's only a common. And... Uh, yeah, inflicts battle damage at a watt, not once per turn. It's going to attack directly. Not a bad card, and it's level 4. And then we've got Shining. Oh, this card. I remember this card. Can't be destroyed by battle. This is this is another Masochist actually used this card against us, I remember, a long time ago. And it's a Rock, which is usable with Ad Emancipator Analyzer. Can't be destroyed by battle. End of the damage step. If this card battled an opponent's monster, place one counter on it. And then basically, you know, it gets those counters, place one monster, deck on, we can search any monster basically. Uh, it can draw a card if it has two counters, three counters, uh, add a monster from deck, and four, you can add a card from deck, any card. So it's an interesting card. Basically, every time it battles, it gets a free counter, and then every counter it has, we can do cool stuff. Not the worst card in the world, and it can't be destroyed by battle, and it's got 2,000 defense, and it's a level 4, so I might play this. I want to see if I can squeeze this in, but this is definitely a very cool card. And then let's see what this is. We've got Thunder Dragon Colossus. How in the world can I make that? Wow, that's a crazy pull. That's like such a crazy pull. What rarity is that? Is that Nemesis card? Because we can definitely make this if we if we have that Nemesis card, we could definitely one million percent make this. Because we don't banish a lot, but I will find ways to banish. This is a crazy card. This is like, but and we have Thunder Dragon actually. We have we have literally we have regular Thunder Dragon somewhere around here. Uh, we don't have multiple copies, but we have like this. This needs Thunder Dragon plus. A thunder monster but we we have regular old thunder dragon we have it so that's interesting that's really interesting i got to check that nemesis card that we have wow that is a it's like a that's a pull you really got to think about that is really good i gotta go check if we have is a keystone that you need or nemesis archer i forget which one you need but one of them you need i'm gonna go check all right let's open these legacy tickets too we have to open them just in case the, the, the nemesis cards might be in here i don't know i have to go check where they are and how to get them because that is crazy and then we've got two cards this card's not bad actually i would have used it again early on i would have probably used this this is a gladiator beast card but it's a little bit of lower one um yeah but that that, that card i would have probably used because it burns for 600 every single time it's not the worst card in the world sarketsu armor i am this is going in the deck and then we've got Turbo Warriors, generic, no, Turbo Synchron. Do we have this? No, we don't. I don't think I have Turbo Synchron. And then it's not a terrible card, but I don't believe we can make them. So Arm Armor's going in the deck. That's interesting. I mean, obviously, you'd rather have a Mirror Force, but, I mean, where we are, we'd rather, you know, it's good enough. Uh, Skullbird and Perform Pal Card Gardenum. This card is not bad for beefing up like a barrier statue, but you already have to have a ton of stuff on the field in order to do it and it's permanent but again you you it a lot of things have to go right for this to be a like a good usable card but sarketsu armor is nuts i can't believe we pulled this wow and i can't believe i'm playing it but it, it we are definitely playing it all right so to take a look at the deck i think i'm going to reduce one of the unbreakable spirits because unbreakable spirit can be bad sometimes there are situations where i draw it 
where I can't use it because I have multiple monsters, so it ends up not protecting our barrier statue. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in Sarketsu armor. But then there's situations where obviously it's one as games, so I, you know I don't want to disrespect the card because it is very good. Consolation prize, I'm not gonna lie, is interesting. This card is really interesting. The shining, uh, this thing right here, shining piece, whatever this says, that's an interesting card. I don't know what to remove because we have a decent spellcaster pile here, and we've got a lot of cards that I actually like. But I like trying new things. For sure. I don't want to reduce the spellcasters too much because that would render things useless. And I definitely don't want to do that. So I have to reduce something. I believe the card that I might remove is this Rocket Caliber. He's a good card and he's a tuner and he's definitely good. But I might remove him temporarily just to try out this new card. This card is a less offensive than the Rocket Caliber, but it's more defensive. It's not a bad card. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out. I'm going to put Rocket Caliber back if this doesn't work out. But again, I, my goal is to try new things out constantly. I remember somebody did use this against me, and it was the other masochist used this against me. And it was actually quite a good card, and it was quite interesting. It lets you search anything. So essentially, we can search Barrier Statue. We can search, you know, place any monster on the top of the deck. We can search pretty much any monster. And then the more it survives, the better it gets, actually, which which is interesting. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Let's save the deck and uh, go go play another game. And then, oh, just before I do that, with Thunder Dragon Colossus, I almost almost got out of here. All right, so here are the Nemesis cards that we have. We have this one, Targonier Banish card, Special Summon it. Uh, special Summon this card from your hand. So this is what we have, but this one is actually a Pyro. It does not work. But we do have, this is the one we need, which is this right here. It's actually a lower rarity than the one that we have. But if we pulled this... Corridor? Oh my god, 1000% I, I get to play Colossus, because you can target any banished monster, special summon this card, shuffle that into the deck, and then we can summon Colossus, regardless of what's going on. So that would be bananas, and then, yeah, this is the one that we need, 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 need to pull 100%. Wow, that's crazy. I can't believe that we pulled Colossus before we pulled a copy of Nemesis Corridor. Like, what are the chances? And then, as far as Thunder Dragon cards, let's see what we've got. Because I believe we pulled some other stuff. Uh, I don't know why I typed in Thunder there. Thunder Dragon. We have a copy of Roar. And we have just regular Thunder Dragon. And then we've got obviously like the goat of all goats. We have Thunder Dragon. Which is the best Thunder Dragon card of all time. Which is like... It's insane. It's insane. Um, I can't... It's like we pulled like the Michael Jordan of Thunder Dragons. I, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah, unfortunately, right now, based on what I'm looking at, we don't have actually we don't actually have a way to summon this yet. But like, we're very close. We're very close to being able to summon this because we pull another one of these, we can summon this. But then we have to have another Thunder Dragon, another Thunder Monster. If we this is a little bit out of the way, we're not really going to resolve this. Uh, but like, yeah, if we pull some of those key, whatever I just read, Nem Keystone was that whatever I just said that we needed. What if whatever I just said. If we pull that thing, it's going to be it's going to be serious. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our hand is actually looking quite good. We have Messenger of Peace, the Shining card, the Shining. Let me read this, Peace Philia, yeah, the Shining Piss Philia, uh, which looks like a card Taya Gardner would have, honestly. So we've got that Shining Peace Philia, and then we've got Messenger of Peace, we've got Lightning Vortex, and we've got Witch of the Black Forest. I'm not going to lie, a little bit on the weak side, but, yeah, depending on what board he's got, Lightning Vortex can make things happen. You can activate Soul Absorption, which is concerning, definitely concerning, but at the same time, it's double concerning. Um, I would rather see Soul Absorption than, like, I don't know, I'd rather see Soul Absorption than some kind of, like, you know, uh, I don't know, like, a Kashtira card. Uh, he's going to activate, okay, he's going to gain a lot of life points. He's about to send Necroface, and he's about to gain a ton of life points. What are the chances... He's playing a 41 card deck. What are the chances he opens Gold Sarcophagus and double this thing? And then he's going to be able to send Necroface and he's going to banish 10 cards. So he's going to gain how many life points? 5,000 life points? That's insane. Actually, 10,500. Yeah, he did send Necroface. He's going to send 10,500 life points because he's going to. Oh, yeah, actually, more than that. Yeah, it's 11,000 life points. He's going to banish five here off the top of both of our deck. Uh, while he's gaining the life points and going through everything, this is what we banished. We lost Embodiment, a Threatening Roar, Sarketsu Armor, Familiar Possessed, and Dimension. Which, to be fair, doesn't really matter that we banished these because, honestly, most of the time we don't even draw this stuff anyway, so... It's fine that we banished it, and now we're going to draw, we're going to draw Cubic Ascension, which... Alright, so I have to be a little smart about this. He is going to be able to summon out 
Oh, he has Grand Maju. Um, he's going to be able to... I, I don't want to summon Barrier Statue because I want to be careful of that. Because if I summon Barrier Statue, I can't use Cubic Ascension. So I, I actually don't want to do that. I can go into this thing. At the end of the damage step, we can do things. So I think I'm going to go ahead with the shiny things. I want to start building count. I'm going to go ahead and summon this thing out. And I'm going to just start attacking directly. I know this is, this is going to be kind of a long duel, unfortunately. Um... Actually, this won't even let me search. I think it has to battle a monster. If this card battles a monster... Sorry, sorry, I should have read that better. I'm going to set Cubic Ascension here, and I think I'm just going to pass. I'm just going to pass. I'm not even going to activate the Messenger of Peace because I don't I don't want to activate it. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not gonna activate it. But this is concerning because he's got a lot of cards. Not really a lot of cards banished. He's got six cards banished. Six times 400 is... Not, it's 2400. So Grand Manju is kind of weak right now. Plus, he actually banished two Grand Manju. So he's got one Grand Manju left in deck, but he's banished two. And also, he's got Lava Golems in circulation, so which I'm a little bit concerned about because obviously, Lava Golem is, you know, a Lava Golem. And I don't want to activate Messenger of Peace if he's going to Lava Golem us. All right, he's going to activate the effect of DDR to discard a card and special summon one of his banished cards. I would imagine he's going to summon a Grand Manju. Which, again, it's fine with me because we have Cubic Ascension. So he can summon that if he wants to. And he's going to summon that out. And it's all fine because I'm, I'm literally going to negate it anyway. Yeah, I am going to negate it. I was thinking about, do I negate it? Yeah, I do want to negate it because I want to put it at zero. I was going to go straight to end phase even more interestingly. So now we're going to draw. Memory loss is not bad. Memory loss is going to stop the Necro Face on summon effect. So that's good. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and summon out the... Witch of the Black Forest, and I'm going to, I think I'm actually going to go into a Link, I'm not going to go into Time Thief, I think I'm going to go into a Link, the Virus, because then I get to search off of this, but what's more important, the search or the Time Thief? Honestly, Time Thief is just, it, it, it sucks that I'm saying this, but like, Time Thief is like, in all situations, almost always the better option. He really is, he's almost always the better option, because now, the more stuff I get off the top of his deck, the better cards I get. Honestly, he's oftentimes the best situation. Even right, even to Sue Ship is probably better right now than uh, this. It's either Sue Ship or or yeah, Sue Ship or then I can let me go see what I can search. Let me go see if there's anything that I can search right now that could be like deeply important. Yeah, honestly, I'm looking through this. I don't think there's anything that I really need to search right now. So honestly, I think that either Sue Ship or Time Thief are better. And honestly, I think I think the Sue Ship might be better. I'm just going to go into the Sue Ship, which I, I didn't think I would say, but this is one of those situations where I think Sue Ship is better than Time Thief. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the Sue Ship and I'm going to enter battle phase because I want to start clearing out. I want to start clearing out this stuff that he's got back there because that stuff is really causing a lot of... Uh, problems for us long term because these cards are actually like really annoying yeah those cards are annoying so i want to start getting rid of them if i can and then he is going to be able to add the necro face but we we have the out we have the memory loss to deal with the necro face if he summons it and then i'll put necro face in defense and then it'll stop him from putting back his grand manju and stuff like that all right so standby phase he's going to be able to add back the necro face and if he summons it, it you know it can come out with a ton of attack but right now like i said we do have the out we have the memory loss, plus we have the cubic ascension. And activate allure. He's going to draw two, probably banish a necro face. He's going to banish necro face, unsurprisingly, and he's going to gain a lot because he's going to gain probably another three thousand here because he's going to banish five, and then he's going to banish. Yeah, it's fine. And uh, we did lose. We lost some good soldiers here. Uh, we lost. There can only be one, which doesn't really help. But we lost crackdown, which actually does suck. I swear, look at these. The cards we're banishing are insane. No! Chaos End. Control seven or more banished cards. Remove, destroy all cards. On, wow. Pot of Duality into Spirit Reaper. Did you see that? What is going on? He has like a million life points. Things aren't working out. He's going to add the different dimensional thingamajig, whatever it is. Which is actually, again, kind of fine with me because I have Vigom. So if he summons out the... Kren Manju, we do have the out. This is like a classic. Like this is like a 2007 Kren Manju deck. I'm actually kind of like impressed in a certain sense, but he's got so many life points that I can't even be happy about. Them. All right, he's gonna go back to our turn. Me attacking is like irrelevant because I do like no damage, but we've got multiple barrier statues here, which don't matter because he's got Kren Manju. All right, so we're gonna normal summon this, and I'm gonna attack. I'm actually gonna activate the one Messenger of Peace because I don't want to normal summon a Kren Manju and attack me because I can't actually use the effect of Cubic Ascension right now. So I'm gonna yeah, he's gonna activate something. 
end of damage stat? What does he have? Evenly matched. Bro, why do you have this? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get rid of the barrier statue. You gotta be kidding me. Evenly matched? Yeah, it's like, it's like, this is like a deck from 2007, but the guy time travel and grab one card. Evenly matched. All right, he's gonna activate the DDR, which is actually fine. He's gonna discard reload. Yeah, this is like insane. I imagine he's gonna get Grand Manji, which is fine, because again, we have the cubic ascension. So, like, did we banish the cubic? Please, 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 please. Nope, we didn't banish it. All right, let's activate it before we banish it somehow. Activate it, summon out Vijam, redirect the attack. Bam, hit him, activate the Vijam, and we're going to negate his dude, and now he should be at zero. Perfect. All right, so he's, he can't attack, and he's at zero, and he's attached to this card, and he's got just this. So, on card advantage, we've got him beat badly, but our issue right now is not card advantage. Our issue is the fact that or his life points are like 18, 18 million life points. Like he's got more life points. He's got life points for days. He's going to survive for a while. So we really need to get things happen here. He drew purple poison, which isn't bad. Actually, it has more attack than has more attack than our other monster. So we need to make things happen again. We have to make things happen. So I'm going to normal summon this out. I'm not going to summon the barrier statue because it really doesn't do anything right now. And he's playing lava golem and all of this other stuff. So it doesn't really benefit us. Um, now we're going to, I'm going to summon out the Vijom. Just put it out here just in case it gets attacked. End phase here. Our life points are always going to be lower than his. So we can we can probably get into a Crusadia Avermax. But Avermax isn't doing shit against his deck. Because uh, Avermax loses to uh, Gren Manju very, very badly. He's going to end phase, which is good for us. We can, if we draw... Okay, so we drew this, which isn't bad. It isn't bad. Do we attack or do we make a Time Thief? That's the question. I mean, we attack first, then we make a Time Thief regardless. Yeah, we're going to attack first and then make a Time Thief. Because Time Thief is going to take a card off the top of his deck, and it can possibly help us win. I know these life points don't really matter. They're kind of irrelevant, but we're trying our best here. So we're going to go to Time Thief. We're going to go to Time Thief for sure. Summon him out. And unfortunately, like I said, he's got... He's got Gren... Not Gren much. He's got uh, the other guy that we're afraid of, which is Lava Golem. But I'm going to take cards off the top. He's got 23, I've got 19. So this might end up being a, a game where we where we deck out. Or he decks out. Because he's got so many life points. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to clear that that difference. And he's already gone through one Lava Golem. He might play more, I don't know. We're going to get a Trap card, that's awesome. DD Dynamite, okay. See, it's a good thing we got that. Because that is a dangerous card. Especially with 9... Well, he's got 9 cards banished. He's going to activate the... Magical Mallet, which is fine with me. Again, we don't want him to see Lava Golem, but, I mean, we have to live with the reality of him possibly drawing Lava Golem. Okay, he's gonna... I'm gonna activate Time Thief because, to be honest, place one face-up card up on controls. I'm gonna place this on the top of the deck so he can't gain any more life points. Um, like I said, this Time Thief is kind of on borrowed time right now anyway. Because the second he draws a Lava Golem, he's gone. So we're gonna place that away, and I'm gonna take it so that I'm gonna be able to draw a card here. So I'm gonna put that on top of his deck. And I'm going to take it for our nefarious purposes here. So I'm going to activate it, take it, and I'm going to draw a card. We can draw into something quicker here that we can really use. I'm going to use it, uh, detach, and I'm going to draw a card. Now we don't have to deal with that anymore. That's not actually too terrible. It's not too terrible. I think I'm going to go ahead and... Arborea doesn't do anything with the cards that we have on board. I think I'm just going to summon the Golden Summoner. And I'm just going to go to Battle Phase here. Maybe next turn we go into a Synchro 7. He's got a Battle Fader in hand because it's letting him trigger something. You know, it's something even worse than... What the hell is this? Check some Dragon. Gain life points equal to half the defense. This card's attack can I be... This card... This attack position card can't be destroyed by battle, but he's got 2,400 defense, so we have nothing to get over it. Okay. That's fine. Main Phase 2. I, I don't see the Barrier Statue being useful. Actually, it would have been useful just now. What am I talking about? It would have been useful just now, uh, but I, w I definitely want to get rid of this card. Actually, why do I need to get rid of this card right now? I don't need to get rid of this card. It's not doing anything. It's not doing anything, so I just pass. Uh, it literally is doing nothing, so why am I stressed to worry? Like, why am I worried about getting rid of it? It's doing nothing. All right, we're going to activate Time Thief to get a card off the top of his deck. We're going to grab a monster. It's a meter of millions. Good thing we got great card. Okay, so we definitely got to put that barrier statue back on field. We definitely have to put that on the field because right now I'm starting to see a lot of cards that I, I definitely don't want to see. And uh, we're going to threatening. That's not bad. That's actually a decent card because if he goes on offense out of nowhere that's the card we'd want to see we've evened out almost he's at 19 cards where that's a trap that's not bad griffin wing 
Griffin wing. Ah, that's funny. Um, okay, so I'm going to lightning vortex here. I'm going to lightning vortex. I'm going to get rid of probably Arborea. Yeah, Messenger of Peace can come up later. I'm going to get rid of Arborea. And now I'm going to summon out the barrier statue. Now we go to battle. Go to war. We go to war. Let's let's start attacking. And I see a decent amount of damage every turn that we, that we can output right now. So this isn't too bad of a situation. And we've got the trap underneath our time thief. Now main phase two, we set the threatening roar, and we pass here. And what's cool is this will let you bounce tribute, target one monster on the field return. So we can actually bounce anything. Uh, if only we could just recur the Sioux ship, that would be good because then I would definitely make it if I could. But we can bounce any monster, so we can bounce, we can activate Time Thief, try to get a card. Again, we have a lot of good stuff right now, we got a monster, <laughs> Marshmallow. <laughs> this guy's just hilarious, dude, it's like, it's it's such a, like, interesting mix between, like, modern and classic cards. It's actually kind of fun to watch. Now, he's gonna set a card, I mean, knowing this dude, it could very well be, like, a Mirror Force. But, uh, we don't really have a choice but to play play to some degree into what's going on here. I mean, I could try to... I'm going to activate this, obviously, because we might end up decking him out based on the way this game is going. I'm going to activate this. He's going to activate the Banquet of Millions, which I actually don't care about because my extra deck is going to be able to come back, and his won't. So he's going to turn off his own Eater of Millions. And I don't see a benefit to doing this as of this moment. So if he banishes his entire extra deck, I... Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. It actually isn't the best situation for us because it could, he can ba if he banishes everything, he can DD Dynamite at some point and wipe us out. So... We have to wrap things up here. We definitely have to wrap things up. We're just going to banish everything we have. Yeah, everything. And we're going to get a Gren Maju off the top. That's fantastic. Because now we've got a Gren Maju, and then he's got his other two Gren Majus in the graveyard. That's really good. Um, so now we d don't have to worry about uh, going to battle or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to start playing... Oh, yeah. I was just about to use my extra deck. <laughs> I just went to go... So what I was going to do is I was actually going to go into the Daybreaker dude, whatever his name is. I was going to go into him. I was going to link these two away. And then I was going to use the Trap card to summon another Vigom. And then possibly go into a Link 3. Uh, but obviously that's impossible now. But it's whatever. I, I couldn't have done that anyway because I have the Barrier Statue. So we're going to do some attacks right now. This guy's getting kind of desperate. He's making moves that he shouldn't be making. But it's, it's fine. Uh, we're going to attack, and we're going to go to main phase 2. I'm actually just going to set this ledger book too. I'm just going to pass here. Ledger book's not bad. We have a lot of interruption. Threatening war, ledger book, memory loss. We have a lot, and we get our cards back. Mighty fine. The only thing is, like I said, we don't really have an out for the DD Dynamite. DD Dynamite burns for 300 for each remove from play card, which is kind of a lot. Is that game? Actually, no, it's not game. So right now, he's not at game yet, but he's getting close. We got a battle fader, which has, wouldn't do anything. But it's getting close because he's at 22. 22 uh, times 3 is a decent amount. I don't know what that is. It's a little concerning, but I guess we'll have to see, especially with his weird deck. Actually, we can move it out of the way anyway. We have the, the ledger book because this will let us banish anything and move it out of the way. Um, that's not really a useful draw right now. I will activate the Time Thief to add get something off the top. It's a trap card. That's not bad. Okay, so I... Oh, I can actually tribute to bounce this to his hand, which I'm going to do. I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to tribute the Vigom because I can get that back at any time to bounce this to his hand. His Vigom wasn't really doing anything at the moment, so it's fine. We're now going to go to battle and go for some more attacks here. So we're going to be able to get in for some decent damage here. And next turn, if he does it again, we can just uh, get Vigom back out and then... I, I don't really see a point to set this or activate this right now because we do have attack prevention and stuff like that. So we don't have to do it. And we have two traps under Redoer, but we have not used them. Because I definitely want to use the traps under Redoer, but he has not placed the card face up yet. So there's no point yet to do it. Activate Redoer, obviously. We're going to get a trap card. Three traps. I've never had three trap cards under him and not... This would be the most disgusting Zeus you've ever seen in your life. This would be a... How many materials? This would be a... Nine, this would be a 10 material Zeus if I made this. All right, he's going to go to end phase. The, I'm not going to lie, the back row is concerning. We're going to get Analyzer, which is a stronger monster than the one he has. I'm a little bit scared of what he's got face down here. I'm not going to lie. So we're going to get a card off the top. It's a spell card. It's the Inferno Tempest, which we will not be doing 3,000 damage. Uh, we're going to summon out the Analyzer, and I'm not going to activate it. I'm actually just going to go to battle phase here. I, I could tribute this to bounce this. But then we're going to have to deal with this monster regardless. So I think I'm just going to go to battle phase and see what it is finally. 
Again, I don't. It's not a Grand Manju. We know that because we've checked the other stuff. So I mean, we know it's not a Grand Manju because we have one of the Grand Manjus. Two of them are in the graveyard. So we know it's not a Grand Manju. It's a big eye. That's what I was scared of. A big eye. Look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck. Place them in or any order. That's what I was afraid. I was afraid of big eye. This guy's deck is outrageously funny. I I actually kind of love this. <laughs> if we win, it's kind of a miracle because we after all of that work, we've gotten him to 7,200 life points and. We've been on offense non-stop, and we just recently got him to 7,200. He's going to change the order of our cards, and we're going to go ahead and attack. He's going to activate another Banquet of Millions, which again is rather concerning, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually... Can I activate the trap effect of this too? Can I place this on top of his deck? Because I want him to draw this next turn. I want to keep him drawing the same garbage. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this. Let me see if I can actually use the trap effect of this. I'm curious. He's going to activate Ash Blossom. Bro, this dude is like an enigma. I've never seen anyone like him. He's going to Ash Blossom our Time Thief Redoer, which is like the most shocking thing. I mean, I'm guessing he's going to banish everything here. Yeah, he's, he's going to banish two cards. This guy is like unbelievable. It's like evenly matched Ash Blossom Big Eye. I've, I've never seen anything like this dude. He's actually like one of the most interesting players I've ever played against. Uh, he's got 24 banish, which is not enough to kill us yet, which is good. And that's it. I mean, I guess this is his last turn. He has this is this is it. This is this is where he gets to decide whether he wins or loses. Uh, we're gonna go to end phase and we're gonna grab a card off the top. We're gonna add back our stuff. Let's see. He's gonna draw that. It doesn't matter if it's lava golem. Like it doesn't. I don't know what he could possibly draw that can end this. But I mean, I guess we'll see. We're gonna activate time thief and we're gonna get something off the top. We're gonna get another monster. It's another spirit reaper. That's crazy. Spirit reaper. So much fun stuff. I love this guy's deck. He's going to set one card, which is probably the most scary card of all time. And we're going to go back to our turn here. Can't do anything about that one card. We don't have any back room. We have shrink. Uh, we, there's nothing that we can do but attack here. That's all we can do. So we're going to attack. He doesn't have a lot of life points left, which is positive. It's a DD Dynamite. Okay, so we have 24 times 400. How much? That is 72, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see. I, I believe that's 72. Never mind, it isn't even 72. It's, yeah, it's 300 for each card removed from play. Oh, okay, it's our cards removed from play, not his cards removed. All right, so that's it. He surrendered, and uh, we won that. Wow, okay, that was a fun game. That was a really fun game. It was very tense because I didn't know what he was going to have at any given time. We're back to gold one very quick in the month. We got 100 gems, two legacy tickets. Out of curiosity, this is our opponent's deck. Uh, it is unbelievable. I'm looking at this. There's so much going on here. I, I don't even know what to really say. But he's got Battle Faders, one Spirit Reaper. I swear we saw this like multiple times. One Eater of Millions, one Marshmallow, one singular Ash Blossom that came up at the perfect time. DD Patrol Plane. This is a really interesting deck. Necroface, I was worried about Necroface. He had one singular Necroface. Uh, he plays two copy, three copies of this, and he happened to see him. This card came up. It's actually incredible. Like all of these cards came up. This is what I'm talking about when I say like. The worse the player, the less they brick. Like, if you watch that duel, every one of these cards came up for him at the perfect moment that he needed them, which is kind of amazing. He had Inferno Tempest, which um, doesn't really matter. Never came, like, he never drew this, for example. We never attacked for 3,000, he never drew it. But he always drew, like, Chaos End when he needed it. He drew uh, all of these other, like, a lot of these other cards. Ash Blossom, one Ash Blossom, he drew when he perfectly needed it. But it was actually kind of amazing. I really, really enjoyed that duel. All right, let's open this master pack. Now let's see what we get. That was definitely a well-earned win. A lot of fun. Another UR possibly hiding inside. The last one was crazy. Colossus is crazy. We just got to pull the right stuff and then we can play it. But Colossus is a crazy one. Wow. Okay. Two URs. Who is this? A Melodious Diva card. Target a light in the graveyard. Add it to your hand. Any light. Can't target non-lights. Uh, the turn you activate this effect. Um, can't activate non-lights. This isn't actually a bad card, but it's a level 7, so I don't really know how to summon it. Uh, this is four level 10s. How do we even summon this? Um, maybe one of you will tell me. Four level 10s. Assault Reboot it requires Assault Mode cards, which we don't have. Uh, Sovereign of the Birds, level 6. This card is actually not bad, but it's one of those cards that is very, very particular. So if your opponent controls two monsters with the same attribute, you can special summon this for free. So going second, this is actually quite good. It's a free, essentially, level 6 summon. Um, the issue with this card is, and then it has a negate. Yeah, you can target one face-up card, any card, not just a monster, but any card on the field and negate it. Um, so that's pretty good. That's not a quick effect, but it's still like a negate. It's pretty good. Uh, but... 
Again, it's just very specific. Like, if your opponent's not playing two monsters with the same attributes, then what does it do? What does it do going first? Like, it's it's got some issues. This is another card. Like, if we had this in, like, week 1 through 10, I... Not, not week, what, episode 1 through 10, 1 million percent I would have played. I wouldn't even have thought about it because it's, like, a decent card. Uh, this is one of those tribute monsters I would have loved. Like, all of those episodes where I had, like, Karaz, for example, and I just couldn't do anything with him. Uh, this card would have been just so much better. Uh, this is actually a good card. Sting Lane. If you control a face of X Seed monster, special summon this card. Free special summon if we control an X Seed monster. We actually have an, another dark X Seed monster, a Raid Raptor card that does something similar. Where if we control a dark X Seed monster, we can summon for free. And this, if you control a X, X Seed monster of any kind, you can summon for free. So they're both good. So we have to kind of look at them. Uh, the issue with them is that we are playing, you know. The, the problem with the Raid Raptors is that you already have to control an Exceed monster for them to be usable. And then they're usable. But if we don't control the Exceed monster yet, then they're not very usable. So something like Goblinberg at the moment can be a lot better. And then we've got Simp, uh, Simp Amplifier, which is uh, a play on words there. But we don't have a lot of Symphonic Warrior cards. Now, two URs. Let's look at what's going on in here. We've got... Wow, that is a good card. That is a really good card. But I don't know if we can use that, but that is a really good card. So if we... Actually, we can use that. If you control face-up non-effect monster, special summon this card for free. That is good. That is usable. Uh, so right off the bat, that is 100% a usable card. Uh, yeah, for our normal monster deck, this is essentially a free summon. And it's a free tuner summon. Period. This is a really, really good card. And then we get to banish this card from the graveyard and summon a token. And that token uh, is... Yeah, the, 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 we can treat it as a tuner for a synchro summon. So essentially, if we have this and a level 4 normal monster, we can get to a level 8 synchro or a level 6 synchro, both of which are good. Now, the issue is, of course, that... Uh, yeah, all of these effects are good. The issue is that we don't have a level 8 synchro that's really super good right now. I actually have to check if we have any level 8 synchros that are even summonable right now. But we can summon a level 6 synchro, which I think we we have Coral Dragon, which is which is quite good. So let's check what's going on under here. We've got... No way! We've got a Cubic. Crimson Nova Dark Cubic Lore. This is the one that I think they always OTK me with. This card is fantastic. But we can't play it yet because we don't have enough Cubic cards in our hand. Um, to reveal. I have to check how many cubic cards we have. I don't believe that we can play this. As much as I want to play this, we can't play this. This is a really, really sick card. Can attack twice, unaffected by monsters with less than 3,000 attack. Burns both players for 3,000. Really great card. I don't think this is going to be usable for us. This is usable, but in our normal deck for sure. Dragon deck for sure. Dragon and normal. This is definitely usable in both those decks. Uh, but if we had a level 8 synchro, that would be crazy. If we had a level 10 synchro, that would be even more crazy. So, yeah, really good pulls. And this too. The sing single lane is, is also a good. Like, overall, these have been pretty good pulls. All right, so let's see our master legacy tickets here. Let's see what we pull out of these. I always say master because it says master on the pack, but obviously the legacy tickets. We've got a second copy of Book of Life, not bad. Prickle Fairy, your opponent cannot attack insect monsters, and this card's a plant. Uh, if this card it, if this card battle the monster at the end of the damage step, change that monster to defense, eh. Don't really, don't really see that as too usable of a card. Let's see what else we got here. We've got Destruction. This is a self decay card, not going to happen. And Lighten Load. Once per turn, add a level 7 or higher monster from your hand to your deck. Shuffle it, draw a card. So, if we're playing a bunch of bricks, we can put one of those bricks back, and then we can shuffle the deck and draw. So, honestly, not the worst card in the world. I actually have never really read this card. This is an old card. This is, I, I think this is from Pharaonic Guardian. I haven't read this card in probably 15, 20 years. Um, this is actually not that bad of a card. If we are playing a bunch of bricks, level 7 or higher monsters... This wouldn't be too bad. This is a every turn you could do that kind of reset your hand. It's not a, it's not the worst card I've read, uh, but we don't we don't I don't think it's usable for us. All right, so in the deck builder, just for you, uh, first of all, ring ringworm is just ringo ringo worm is a crazy card. Uh, again, I would use this, but we just as of right now, it just does not fit this deck. Like all this can basically do in this deck, it, it can't special summon itself for free. It can special summon itself for free in the other deck with our normal monster mash this is 100 percent going in here i'm not even going to think about it i'm actually going to throw this in here immediately before i forget so that definitely works this raid raptor card is really good but again we don't this is this is what in our particular strategy this is more of a win more card than it is like it, it's like okay you already have to have 
Time Thief Redoer on the field, and then you get to summon like an additional card, which which is this card, which the problem is once we have Time Thief, that's usually what we end on. So what else are we going to make in terms of Exceed Monsters? I mean, I guess we could make maybe uh, this, which doesn't do much, but we actually have the other one that we can summon. I forget the one that books two monsters. We can actually summon that. We can summon this. Um, I forget the, the Evil Swarm card. Yeah, we can summon the Evil Swarm Nightmare, for example, um, if we, because it's dark level four monsters. If we can extend far enough, I would 100% play this. In terms of Raid Raptors, we've got this one, which is uh, you can detach right here. You can you can uh, detach one material from a dark Exceed monster, special summon this card. So this is pretty cool. And then we've got the Raid Raptor Sting Lang Singing Lanius. So we've got Singing Lanius, and then we've also got the uh, where did I put them? Right here, the Raider's Wing. So both of those work well with Time Thief, but again, in our particular strategy, they're a little bit more win more than they are like winning cards. And then to check real quick our other cubic stuff, right? Just just for curiosity, for the three cubic players that exist on Earth, uh, we've got a decent core that's building here. Really quite a decent, like I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of decent. Um, we've got one Nova, which is like the game winner, right? We've got two cubic ascensions. I would be playing two if I could, but again, we don't have enough vid jobs. Uh, we've got the cubic casualty, which again, isn't even a bad, like it's it's not a great card, but it's not a bad card either. We've got uh, one copy of this blade dude, uh, one copy of a buster, and then we've got obviously the goat vidjom. And then unfortunately we are missing some stuff, which is we're missing Duza, which is like one of the main, like this is the main searcher we need it, or not the main searcher, the main send from deck. So we're missing that. And then we're missing some of these other ones, unfortunately, to make it really playable. The fusion isn't super important, uh, but we're missing this stuff. Like karma is super important. We're missing karma. We're missing Dharma. Um, so we're missing a lot of cards right now to make it fully playable. And I, I don't feel comfortable playing this dude because we... Even if I played every cubic card, what are the chances that we have three cubic cards in our hand? It's like, it's still, you know, it, we're, it, we're putting a bricky situation into, into play here. So as of right now, as much as I want to play that, it's not happening. But crazy pull with the ring, ring what would I say? Ringworm or whatever his name is. Uh, Ringo Worm. All right, guys, I just logged back into the game. They dropped so much new stuff. It's actually kind of crazy. There's all these packs now. Uh, there's all these free packs we haven't actually claimed any of the free packs because if you remember correctly after three wins we can claim one of the packs that they have available in the store i haven't done that in like at least 10 episodes they, they dropped all of these new packs which is like a ton uh, but more importantly they dropped this which is a free guaranteed what is it glossy you are royal right you are that i mean that's kind of cool and then they drop some mates and some other stuff i can't uh participate in and they drop the old bundle uh but yeah i mean that's that's uh it's pretty cool stuff honestly i don't think we're going to be able to do this because some of these cards are kind of a little too good like i, I don't know i'm on the fence about this i'm i'm, I'm like 90 percent not going to do this uh, but yeah, cause there's some cards I'm looking at. It's like break sword in there. I don't want to click on it. I don't want to like the animation to like trigger immediately. This I see like break sword. I see the BLS link. That would be really good. I think this stuff's a little too broken, honestly, for us. I'd rather pull it out of the main pack. I like the, the challenge of the uh, thing. Also, I got to get some more packs cause I have so many gems. I have gift boxes full of gems that I need to, I have literally so many gems in this game right now. I need to get some packs. All right. We just won the coin flip. I... It's a pretty good hand. Uh, we have Apophis. We have no free special summons. We have Barrier Statue plus there can only be one. Uh, this is a card. Apophis is a card that I'm considering getting rid of. It might not be something you want to hear, but uh, the thing with Apophis is sometimes he he's a little slow. That's the issue with him. And uh, the benefit with him is that we get a Time Thief that is... Obviously, it can put a card on top of our opponent's deck, but the drawback with Apophis is that it sometimes, like with Barrier Statue, it's weak. Going first, it doesn't really do much. Oh, they're playing Diabell Star. <laughs> that sucks. Barrier Statue's not doing anything right now. <laughs> what can you do? It happens. Uh, yeah, they're searching Diabell Star, um, and obviously the deck is has Pyros, so you know they're going to be able to do stuff. But we're we're going to see what we can do here to try to lock them out. Uh, they're going to reveal a fire, uh, the snake eye to search something else. Uh, by the way, I, I changed up the the settings. Let me know if it looks any better because I did change the settings. So theoretically, the game, sh the video should look significantly better uh, because I, I did it. I'm, I'm playing on full screen now. I was playing on like partial screen and I would kind of like open it up. Uh, 
Yeah, so it should look better. So he's going to normal summon this. It's correct. No, you can add one fire monster from your deck to your hand. So he's going to add a level one fire monster. It's just cool with me for now. Like I said, we can. Uh, he's going to add Poplar and uh, add this to the hand special summon. We're actually going to chain there can only be one immediately. And there can only be one. We'll leave this Poplar in the hand. It's actually crazy that Poplar is released in this game because it just got released. In the TC, it actually hasn't even been released. Technically, the day the day that this video goes out, it's going to be released. How do you already have this? Yeah, they, they, it's crazy. They have all of the new the new stuff. That's actually kind of amazing. Wow. Okay. And he's going to be able to go right into the the Flame Bridge Dragon, which is a dragon. Target one face. Okay. And he's going to be able to put our monster in the continuous zone. Okay, that's interesting. But at least the Apophis we can use now. But I'm not going to use Apophis. I'm going to go into Time Thief next turn. I'll, I'll take the three grand. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with it. And they're going to summon Diabell Star, which has an art, which is kind of cool. If this card's normal summon, place one. S okay, simple spoil card. Okay. Yeah, I mean, our, our uh, this deck is okay. Like pure, what is this? Sinful spoil. Uh, pure snake eye it's a decent deck it's actually kind of crazy that they released the full deck like immediately into this because it, it, so it with some decks you have to wait for things to come out with other decks they just release everything immediately so it's kind of interesting to see that what do we do here so i didn't even read what he just said let me read that real quick okay so he can negate our effects and that's pretty good this is a spell caster I'm not going to lie, this game's not looking very good. So you can negate one of our cards. I'm going to try to play it out a little bit, but this is not looking good. So I'm going to normal summon out the Nefarious Archfiend. And then I'm going to go into Embodiment of Apophis if I can here. I will go into that. Yeah, I, I'm going to go into Embodiment of Apophis. Now what I will say is I don't, I don't see a route. I can get to a... Link three, but I can't get to a, to a link four yet. Yeah, I can get to a link three. Unfortunately, like I said, link four is a little bit out of range right now. So we go into time thief. I think we just go into time thief, and we're gonna summon that out. I'm gonna activate the effect of. I mean, I. I guess we activate time thief. We try to bait out one of his cards here. That's our goal. He's not going to respond, so we're going to activate, and that's it, just one. We're going to put, he's a little low on cards, but I don't really want to, this card's good. I mean, they're both good, so we're going to put this back, top of his deck, and we're just going to pass here. That's probably the best we've got right now for ourselves. And he has the Poplar in hand, I know he's got that, and then he's got the Snake, so he's basically just got those two. And activate Time Thief to get a card. He's got Poplar and the Big Snake. Then he's got Diabell Star and he's got the Sen One Monster Negate. So he's got some stuff. We've got some stuff. We've all got some stuff right now. We're gonna get a Maxi off the top. A Trap card obviously is best, but it's not the worst thing either. He's gonna activate to send a Diabell Star and then negate our effect, which I am. Hmm, I was actually, he's going for that. I thought he was going to go for the Time Thief. That's, I guess that's fine. He's going to be able to negate temporarily the, there can only be one. I, does he have any plays though? Is that permanent? And he's going to banish and then get into his uh, Simple Spoils package. I got to check if that is a permanent, is that a permanent wherever that is? Send one Diabell Star target one face of card, negate its effects. Okay, that's permanent. Wow, okay. This card's normal summoned, all right. Yeah, that's 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 a permanent negate. That's not uh, it's not fun to see for us. This is our first run in with with uh, with this deck. Like I said, I've I've seen it played uh, not pure. I've seen it played with Fire Kings. Obviously in the TCG, I've seen it played with Fire Kings, and with Fire Kings, it's quite good. But it's only an engine with Fire Kings. Uh, but th it's actually kind of crazy not with Fire. Like like the pure deck. Now that I'm watching it with all of the support being played, is actually kind of crazy. All right, he's gonna summon out the Snake Eye monster back out from the deck. Which I was right, it is a brick in hand, so I guess it is good. Target one monster, place it in spawn trap, so he's going to do this, so we're going to obviously chain it. Uh, so we're going to take damage, we're going to see if he's able to summon another monster. If he's able to summon another monster, then I mean that happens, but... So we're going to detach, and we're going to place, yeah, banish that. So if he can summon another big monster, we pretty much lose. Like if he summons out the Diabell Star Witch again, we're screwed here. 
which that animation was actually quite cool. There's a, there's, her, her artwork is a little busy. There's a lot going on in there, so it doesn't really show how cool it is. I was going to go into an IP. That's tough. Special summon two level one fire monsters. That's that's pretty good. It doesn't lock you into anything. Yeah, it doesn't even lock you into fires. It just just special summon two back. We got Poplar. It's kind of crazy. Like I said, this stuff. I, as of recording this, this stuff hasn't even come out on the TCG, and it's already out in Masterville, which is like bananas. Like on one hand, you've got. You've got stuff that it's, it's like you're waiting for cards to get released in Master Duel while at the same time there's already cards that don't exist in the TCG. Everything's already available in OCG. There's a lot going on. And that's that should be the game there. Wow, that that, that deck is pretty sick going f like like that deck even pure is actually kind of sick. It just completely destroyed us. Uh, that was incredible to watch. All right, so we just won the coin flip. I, I just talked about removing Apophis and then I draw Apophis, which is just great. Uh, we don't have access to Time Thief, so we're going to set, set, and set. And that's it, just pass here. This is the best we've got. Like I said, I, I just, I, I don't know what it is. Like I just talked about getting rid of this and then, and then we see it twice in a row. Uh, interestingly enough, there's a card that we have not drawn in any game yet, and it's Dimension Prison. We have not seen this card. We just haven't. Like, I, I pulled it. Where's it been? I, I pulled this two... Like, I pulled this, like, f like first five minutes into the last episode. And obviously, these episodes are, like, two hours. And I have not seen this card. And it's been, at this point, like, probably four hours of gameplay. And I have ne I've never seen this card once. Okay, we just lost. He's, if he has the full combo here, I'm just going to scoop. Because this is... Uh, this deck, if you have no interruptions against this deck, it's, it's worse than playing against, like... It's worse than playing against any other deck. Because this deck just will combo for 35 minutes and put up 4 negates. The problem is if I can't stop Junk Speeder, I'm, I'm pretty much done here. And he's got full combo. Alright, so I'm definitely taking out Apophis here. Because, like I said, it just it's going first sometimes it doesn't really do much. And the question is, what do I replace it with? I'm going to bring back the Rocket Monster that we removed, the Rocket Caliber. Because that way we have a little more, a few more monsters, a little more consistency, more to do going first. So I'm going to replace that, I'm going to save that. All right, so we just won the coin flip again. We've been winning them a little bit here. Our hand is decent. It has a lot of battle phase stuff. It has preventing our opponent from entering the battle phase, and then it has two things for when they do enter the battle phase. Well, it doesn't really prevent them from going into the battle phase. It just prevents... Uh, you're going to max see that. Beautiful. I don't think we're going to get a rock off the top, but I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see if we get a rock off the top. Hopefully we just made them waste their max C there. Yep, we didn't get a rock. We did see dimensional. We finally did get to see the dimensional prison. <laughs> but just uh, not really. So the waste of the max C. We have this, which is a non-targeting removal technically. I'm going to go ahead and... I, I have to go all out kind of because just the nature of our deck. Uh, we have to go all out because if I just like activate only this and don't set these other two and then our opponent like out this then we essentially lose so I, we have to do more than than less here so if they harpies feather duster they harpies feather duster but i have to do what i have to do i mean there's not anything i can do they're gonna go pot of extravagance which is always well you only did it for one so it could be a lot of different decks usually when they pot of extravagance for three then for six then it's like okay they've got some nonsense going on it could be actually a pure chaos max deck because he's got the chaos max mate but i mean these mates really don't mean anything. It's just people playing random stuff. And this is another card, actually. Like, Pot of... Pot of he just tributed our monster. He just gave... Literally just gave us a, a free, bigger monster. I, I don't have an issue with that. Uh, like, Pot of Extravagance is an interesting card where it's like, would I even play this? <laughs> would I play Pot of Extravagance? Because, like, yeah, it, it draws two, but we have the chances of, like, banishing our really good cards. So I don't even know if I would really play them. He's going to go into... He's playing Mech Knights. Which is not good for us. And uh, he has multiple mech knights. So he can actually like pop stuff. And then he's went basically three rank eights here. Three level eights. That, so he can go into a rank eight. I have no idea. Absolutely no idea why he set this card way over here. Knowing that he's playing mech knights. I, I just don't really understand the meaning there. Now what is positive is that he doesn't have a way to attack us anyway. So I don't know what he's going to go into. But I guess he can go into the package. The galaxy eyes package to start popping things. He's going to go into Draglubion. 
fingers crossed that he goes into the one that nope he doesn't i was gonna say i hope that he goes into the one that just uh you pay life points i hope he was going to go into that one but he didn't so he's going to banish and then he's going to be able to what is this search i believe it searches and then he just returns that that's a really good card and then that other one searches to the one he's about to summon the level five he's going to special summon the blue sky and then he's going to search again and he's going to search for eclipse i believe is the one he searched just now and then he's going to pass so that'll wrap up his turn and we're going to get memory loss. It doesn't really do much right now, so I, I'm just going to pay the life points, yes. And I'm just going to set memory loss. And... I mean, I think I'm just going to pass, right? I, I, I guess we can set the win in defense mode. And then we just pass, just in case he breaks our defenses. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go with that. I mean, there's not much else we can really do here. He's going to activate the effect of this Gradle card. Gains 500 during your main phase. You can send this equip card. All right, that's an interesting card. And the Mech Knight's going to return. And he's going to destroy his own monster. And he's going to summon two Gradles. So he's playing Kaiju, Gradle, Mech Knight. Interesting. Very interesting. This is a really, really goofy deck. He's going to summon out the Gradle, Slime Jr., and the Cobra. Which, this deck is a little bit odd. I'm not going to lie, but it is a constructed deck, like some semi-constructed deck. I don't want to give him too much credit. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's a lot going on in this guy's deck. Wow, that's just, what is he going to make, a Barone? Yeah, it's a level 8. Barone, how did I know? It's a Bar uh, Barone, the bane of our existence. Now, we might be able to steal this Barone if we play this intelligently. Actually, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna use Memory Loss to bait his Barone, and I'm going to try to steal it later. So I'm going to use Memory Loss, and hopefully he negates it. Because then when he attacks, I can either Sarketsu or Memory. Yep, I'm going to be able to Memory of an Adversary. That's fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. Fantastic. Now we get to steal a Barone. We can't pull a Barone, so we'll take it. So he's going to get rid of our Messenger of Peace, but Barone doesn't have a Negate on it. And we're going to be able to take it, and then f eventually we'll have a Barone, which is going to be a pop every turn. He's going to summon the Gradle Alligator. I'm going to attack with the Gradle Alligator. I'm going to read this real quick before I make any commitments whatsoever. So, if this goes through, he basically gets to take the monster. Which is annoying. He gets to take the kaiju if, if I let it go through. If I don't let it go through, yeah, I guess I... I mean, I really don't have a choice here. I'm going to have to Sarketsu. So I'm going to go ahead and Sarketsu armor. That way, we get to keep the kaiju and he has to attack into the kaiju. And he has, the only quick effect he has is Indigo to make Indigo move itself, which obviously doesn't matter. But, unless there's some trap effect that I'm not reading that has something to do with something here, like maybe this has a grave, no it doesn't. Yeah, the only effect he has is this to move itself, which is irrelevant. It's fine with me. Yeah, because if I let the Gradle resolve, he takes this and then he gets an additional attack, and then he attacks over this, and he has three attacks. This way, he still has to attack into the Gamma Seal now. Because I need all the life points I can uh, save here to use for the memories of an adversary. So we're going to lose our win. That's fine. We're going to lose a win. It's not the end of the world. Uh, we're going to lose his Gamma Seal. And then this is going to try to attack. We're going to take the damage, obviously, and then we're going to get rid of this Barone. And at the end phase of his turn, we get the Barone. So we really need to draw something important here to save us. And this this can be very bad for us. Depending on what he gets here, this can be very bad for us. It's a Draglubion. Draglubion can make a lot of stuff. He just made a Draglubion. Okay, now the problem with Draglubion is he can't be targeted. That's actually... that's can't be targeted, though. Okay, so hopefully, fingers crossed, he summons something else. Because Draglubion's good, but he cannot be targeted, so I can't steal him right now. I can't steal him, and I can't out him with Barone, unless I crash the Barone. But I'm not trying to crash. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. The hope is that he draws a monster that he can summon, and I can take that monster. Because then that way, I can protect myself. This is actually a fine game. Monster Reborn? You gotta be kidding. Who am I playing against here? Monster Reborn. We're all gra our graveyard sucks. Another Draglubion. They both can't be targeted. Yeah, it doesn't even need materials. Just cannot be targeted with card effects. I have two untargetable We lost. That sucks. What are the chances? He gets two untargetable monsters in like a, the span of five seconds. Yeah, so I'm learning very quickly here that playing Yu-Gi-Oh! at the beginning of the month is like, is like living in hell. It's like terrible. Uh, gold 1 is like 
so competitive, it's outrageous. I mean, that last deck was, was not super competitive, but, you know, it's whatever. It's, it's the luck of the draw. Maxi on a barrier statue. Thank you. And then we're going to set. We're going to wait. That Maxi is a total waste. Not that we were probably going to special summon again, but okay, take it. We'll take that. Uh, so he's going to... He's uh, He has a bunch of blue eye stuff. So he might be playing blue eyes. I don't know if he's playing blue eyes, but if he is playing blue eyes, then barrier statue's pretty damn good against blue eyes. Uh, he's got, obviously, the only card is Lord of D. The Lord, the new Lord of D, the Dictator of D, that is the only card. It's like a normal summon that's like 1,200 attack that I mean, they might be able to do, but like Chaos Max is off. Um, all of the other stuff is off. By the way, that dual field looks insane right now. Like, that looks crazy. I can't wait to buy all this stuff on my main account. It looks crazy because I can't buy it on this account because we obviously can only acquire packs the one way. Whoever made this at Konami did a fantastic job. This looks so much better than the Dark Magician one. Like, the, the sleeves are crazy. The new card is crazy. The spinning blue eyes thing right here is like, I don't even know what that is, like a, like a, like a glass showcase. It looks fantastic. This egg, wow. See ya. Well, that was good. See, we won one finally uh, after, after a few difficult games. Uh, three legacy tickets. All right, let's open up a pack, see what we got. It's another shiny in there. I mean, supposedly, right? Because sometimes it isn't. Uh, but supposedly it's a shiny. That's pretty cool. It might just be a rare. Uh, let's see what we get. We've got a Fabled Cruise. Uh, we don't have enough Fabled, but that's not bad. Uh, we've got a Ice Beast Zero Fine, uh, which actually is not a bad card, but it requires two level four Wing Beast monsters, specifically Wing Beast. This is not a bad card at all. It's actually good in Harpies of all decks. Uh, Goatee Fury, which is target a fish and a monster your opponent controls. Banish Bow. Pretty good, but we don't have a lot of fish in our deck. We've got the Fire King Grunix. Fire Kings are pretty cool, but that is not one of the better ones. Another Cosmo Good Witch. That is our third copy of Cosmo Good, which we now have a playset. Uh, Salman Great Gift. We now have... Uh, this card's actually not that bad for our fire deck. Uh, because a lot of people... This is actually not a bad card. You can send a Salman Great Monster from your deck to the graveyard draw a card. Yeah, discard a Salamangrate monster, send one Salamangrate monster from your deck to the graveyard, draw a card, continuous, you could do it every single turn. As far as control decks go, really not that bad. Um, yeah, it's really discard one card, draw two cards, like all of it's like really, really not bad. Uh, we, the problem with Salamangrates is that we don't have any of the link monsters, so it can be a little, little rough for us. I don't think we're ever going to summon this. I don't even think I'm ever going to read this. This is like, is it a fiend? Yeah, it's a fiend. So we don't have any fusion cards. But 2DD Monsters is actually not even that bad in terms of material. It's 3,500 and only requires two monsters. Uh, you can target attack position monster. Your opponent controls destroy, inflict damage to half its attack. Like, that's already pretty good. Like, like, all of these effects are actually quite good. Um, if I drop, if I get Polly, maybe I'll, I'll use it. But that's not bad. And then we've got Supernatural Danger Zone is definitely going in our normal deck. If I remember correctly, let's look at it. If a non-effect monster is special summoned... You can target one card to your opponent controls destroy it. Most likely this is going in our... This is more, more than likely going in that deck. Uh, destroyed by your opponent's card effect. You can special summon a non-effect monster from your hand. This is actually a pretty decent card. And it's a super. This is a pretty decent card uh, for the normal deck. The problem is we don't actually... We don't have a lot of ways to special summon the normal monsters other than Link Spider. That's our issue. Like, if we had Unexpected Die and stuff like that, this card would be broken because be essentially we'd just be, like, popping every single turn. Um, the better card is actually the the Light and Darkness card. I forget what it's called. The one with Dark Paladin on it. It's a, it's a Dark Magician slash Blue Eye support card, but it has Dark Paladin on it, but it's actually just normal, like, normal support. That card is actually better than this card, but this card is actually still quite good for that deck. I have to add that. Um... We don't have Harpies. Another Cosmo Good Witch is kind of crazy, but we're not even playing any right now, so that kind of sucks. All right, let's open up these Legacy tickets to see if we pull anything crazy here. Let's see. One pack's glowing, so I can always stay hopeful. Let's see what we get here. We've got, uh, looks like a Super Ad. This card's actually pretty good. Flip, Special Summon any monster from the hand. Uh, if it's destroyed by battle, a card effect, Special Summon any monster from the hand, which is kind of crazy. There's no limit on that. It summons any monster. Uh, this is a card I used to use a long time ago uh, when I kind of returned to the game. It's actually, an in again, it's an interesting card, uh, but it's a little slow. Like, as far as slip effect monsters go, it's pretty good because there's essentially no restriction on it. And then we've got Gem Knight Ruby, and I don't believe we don't have Garnet, and we don't have 
We have other gem knights, but we don't have garnet, so we can't really use that right now. Uh, but maybe one day, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to use it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, just to see, uh, double costing is not a terrible card. Uh, this is not super usable. I mean, it prevents pendulum summons from being negated, but it's I don't think it's super usable. Um, and then let's see what else we've got here. World Legacy, World Arc, and we've got Curse Armaments already. I don't think that... You can use this card as two tributes for a tribute summon. It's already a two tribute monster, so... So, yeah, I don't think this card's going to be super playable for us. It's extremely specific. It can basically help us float one of our... Like, recur one of our monsters, but then we have to have this thing in hand. So if a Link monster goes to the graveyard, we can get another one like we can special summon it back but i like maybe if they out crusadia we get it back but crusadia is like a boss monster we go into like multiple turns into the game it's not like we consistently get to them so i don't think it's gonna work all right we just won the coin flip again we've been winning a lot of coin flips but our hands have been just kind of okay this one's not bad as so long as they don't play like a fire deck uh this card's not a bad hand i mean it's, we've got shrink and we've got Sarketsu armor like it's not it's not a bad hand then we've got Inkari fire and nefarious archfiend uh, which can float into other stuff which is kind of cool i just realized this is inari fire it's not even Inkari fire i've been saying Inkari fight yeah it's inari fire so what the hell did he just summon chicken game this thing what's going on on the field right now <laughs> What is this? I remember this is from the, uh, the I remember this is from uh, one of the episodes. I remember Joey and Yugi were riding whatever the heck these things are. And then he's activating Kashira Burn. <laughs> what is going on? I'm, I'm invested in this now. Okay, he's got Chicken Game. Uh-oh, Jam Breeding Machine. All right, this is just, this is too fun. All right, this, this is going to be a good game. This is, there's this is a lot going on here. Is this a masochist? I don't know, Mr. Ali. Uh, let's see. I don't know if this is a Masochist deck, but I... <laughs> that, this is a crazy pull in a Masochist deck, though. Uh, do I want to draw or do I want to destroy this card? I'm going to activate it, that's for sure. I think I want to get some card advantage, so I'm going to go ahead and draw. Oof. Not right now, but that's a good card. All right, let's go to... Let's go to Battle Phase. Let's go to Battle Phase. We can only do damage with one of them, so we might as well attack with the Inari Fire. Uh, because the barrier statue is not doing anything because now his life points are lower So he's not going to take any damage because of chicken game So I might as well go to main phase two not risk an attack um, I'm going to set power frame. and I'm going to pass. Okay. This is this is it Next turn. I think I destroy the chicken game, but that that turn I couldn't you know I couldn't let him I had to uh, chicken game is a crazy card though Chicken game really is good because it, it both lets you draw and then it protects and it forces your opponent to pay life points in order to out it which is kind of cool. He's going to activate that, but he actually can't summon them because of the barrier statue. Uh, but this is actually a mandatory effect. So once we're turned during the ma during the standby phase, special summon, mandatory. You don't have an option. That's actually kind of crazy. Jam breeding machine. This is actually a decent artwork, like decent looking artwork. He's going to use this to pay a thousand. I can't tell if there's a bot or a masochist or just a, or just a player with a funny deck. Magician souls could be a masochist. Uh, he's going to send that. He can't special summon it, so it's going to stay in his hand. Or he's going to go to Graveyard, and he can't special summon it. But he's going to send... What did he send? Silent Magician level 8. He should just normal summon it, dude. He should have normal summon Magician Soul, sent away like this and this, or this, or whatever he wants, sent to, and then drew two cards. Magician Soul is a crazy card, though. That's a crazy card to pull. And he's going to set one and pass here. So he's in a he's at a pretty heavy disadvantage, and I don't really want him drawing every single turn. But I'm gonna Oof, what do I do here? Okay. I'm going to pay a thousand for sure. And I think I'm gonna do I draw or do I go into yeah, I draw. I'm gonna draw. That doesn't really help. I'm going to summon out Mr. Nefariousness. And I'm going to go to battle phase. I'm going to attack over something. Hopefully it's... We get, have enough. Yeah, we have enough to get over it. Um, our attacks are... His life points are, low, are lower, so it doesn't matter. 
And then I think next turn, I'm going to draw one more time and I'm going to go into... I'm going to go into the other car. I'm going to go into Sioux ship after. Although Inari Fire is actually pretty good to leave on board because when he gets destroyed, he floats. Uh, this thing floats. Like these cards are kind of interesting because I use them to go into Time Thief 99% of the time. But as far as cards go, they're actually not bad. Like they actually float and stuff. Like this comes back during the next standby phase, even under Barrier Statue. And then this lets you, we can destroy a card and then bring it back. So yeah, they're both like kind of decent. Yeah, I'm going to say that this is possibly a Masochist, but... It could just be a bot. Okay, he's gonna scoop. I don't, bots don't usually scoop. So I'm gonna say that was more than likely a masochist because bots don't scoop. Or it's just a guy with a weird deck. Let's go check it out. Okay, so we just got one legacy ticket. All right, so this is our opponent's deck here. They've got three Raw's Disciples, which is very possible in a masochist run. They're only commons. Uh, he's got a blue eyes, which you could pull out of the legacy tickets. He's got a bunch of random stuff. This is a low rarity, low rarity, low rarity. Uh, yeah, this could very well be a masochist. Raigeki is out of the um, the story mode, but they recently added Raigeki to the master pack, actually, which is kind of interesting. Got one of these, which is an again, it's an SR, so I could see it happening. I don't know what this is either. So this could be a. This is more. I don't know if this is a computer because again, computers don't scoop. Computers do not scoop. Uh, this is a card that I really want to pull, actually. Apophis of the Swamp Deity. But I, every time I say I want to pull a card, I never end up pulling it. So I'm just going to shut up and then just, just wait for stuff to come out of packs. All right, let's crack open this pack. It's another UR. This this episode's been banana. Like, every, we've gotten so many UR. Like, a lot of them have been bad. But we've gotten a lot of UR pulls, which is kind of crazy. Uh, this is a free special summon, I believe, right? All right, this card is not really too great for our purposes. Uh, but I mean, it's kind of whatever. Stonehenge. Chronomaly card. We don't have any anomalies this isn't a bad card but it's a um, magical musketeer card so it won't work dynamis charge is an okay card but yeah activated out of dino mist i mean i guess if we play dino mists in our in our pendulum deck it could be decent uh dark this is our second copy of this i think we just, did we pull it this episode or last i don't even i'm kind of like mixed up synchro dilemma is not a bad card send a synchron from your hand face up in the field special summon one monster from your hand we don't have a lot of synchrons we have some synchrons but we don't have a lot but this is a lot of special summon any monster which is kind of cool target one other card you control destroy it special summon one synchron monster from your hand or graveyard if we had more synchrons i'd probably play it and it's continuous i think it's a cool card and we actually have a decent amount of decent synchrons but we don't have enough where we can just guaranteed to see them and then we've got reptilian hydras generic nope a reptilian tuner which i don't think we have just, uh, with this card single some destroys as many monsters with zero attacks possible draw one card for each monster destroyed obviously in, in a reptilian deck that has a lot of utility because you're turning your opponent's monsters into zero attack but in our deck we don't really have a way to do that and then for our Ultra, we've got Odd Eyes, Rebellion, XYZ, Dragon. This is a rank 7. I don't know that we... I have no idea the, I have no idea how we can summon this, but let's read it and find out if it's worth summoning. Okay, so what I will say about this card is it's actually a very strong card. Like, it has really good effects. Um, it, it's like, it recurs itself very easily. It's basically, it, it comes back no matter what. Uh, I don't know why it's a UR because I, I think it's a little bit. You know, I don't. I don't know who chooses what happens and what the rarities are. Uh, it's honestly not a bad card even in a sealed environment. So it requires essentially two level seven pendulum monsters, which I don't believe that we have, but I have to check. Uh, but basically, what this does is it, you can target two monsters, three thousand or less attack, and destroy them. So that's pretty good. Um, it also has a free recursion effect where, first of all, well, outside of the recursion effect, if you can pendulum summon a level 7, you can summon this, which is already kind of crazy. And then on top of that, if this card gets destroyed, it goes to the pendulum scale. And then when it's in the pendulum scale, uh, we can, during the main phase, special summon this card and then attach a dark monster from the graveyard to it as a material so it essentially returns itself like no matter what this card is coming back it's actually kind of crazy so if our opponent like outs it, it 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 goes to the pendulum scale and then if it goes to the pendulum scale we can summon it. and if it goes to the top of the extra if it goes to the top of the extra deck we can pendulum summon it out so no matter what like this card's coming back out if we could summon it in our well I, again i don't think we have level seven monsters in the pendulum pile deck but the crazy thing is we we can maybe i was thinking about summoning it with uh with gagaga magician but it has to be two level seven pendulum monsters so gagaga magician will not work um 
for us, but that is another kind of UR that I, I just learned existed. All right, let's open this one legacy ticket. Let's see what we get out of this one. Uh, legacy ticket's been great, so we'll see what we get out of this. It could be just about anything. Uh, level 7 generic monster, if we ever pull Ready Fusion, I don't think we can use it. RGB Rainbow Lucian. What in the world is that? A UR. This isn't even... Okay, let's... This, this, uh, right? This has to be good, right? Because it's a UR. I'm excited. Once per turn, you can target one face of monster in the field. Its type is changed to machine. Also, it gains the light, dark, earth, water, fire, wind attributes. Even if this card leaves the field. How does that help us? I, I don't know. I don't know how that helps us. <laughs> I don't know how this helps us. I just, I, I don't know. I have no idea how this card is a UR. Who made, who decided to make this card a UR? Who sat down like, well, this is really good. I, I just am in shock. Because there's so many good URs that we could have pulled. And we got a card that I just learned today exists. Like, if you look at cards included in this pack, like, look at these URs, right? We've got Ningirsu, generic, send. Uh, we've got Deco Talker, protect, you know, protection, stuff like that. Uh, we've got so many cards. I didn't even know this was in here. Galaxy Tomahawk. I'd maybe play a level 7 deck because that's, that's how good that card is. Uh, Cicada King. Yeah. Kraken. Like, so many things. Penguin Brave. I would play this. I would straight up play this. Without a doubt, I would play that card. So many crazy cards here. Morphing Jar. Do we play it? Probably not. But let's, you know, Card Destruction. Blue Eyes, this card is be crazy in our Warrior deck, actually. Like, banana, this is really good. In our Warrior deck, this would be really, really good. There's a lot of cards in here, and it's fire, too. It can actually be used with our Barrier Statue in tandem with that. Uh, but there's a lot of cards that are really strong in terms of URs. And we just pulled a card. It's right here, actually. I'm in shock that this card exists. Like, reading it, I, I don't even know. How, how does that benefit anybody? What's the benefit here? All right, we just lost the coin flip. Our hand is looking okay. We've got Lightning Storm and Kari Fire, and Ari Fire, I mean to say. Dragoodies and Sarketsu Armor, so not the worst hand. Our opponent's gonna pull some cards off the top for Prosperity. Uh, what's crazy is that they are playing like a straight up Kaiba deck. They've got Maiden, they've got Union Hanger, they've got Obelisk. This is very Kaiba. Uh, they've got Dragon's Ravine. What did they add anyway? They added Mausoleum. Is that what they added? Yeah, they added, I guess, Mausoleum. Oh, no, they added Monster Reborn. Yeah, Monster Reborn. Um, and then they've got Union Hanger and Mausoleum. They activated Mausoleum, sent it to the graveyard, and then just activated Union Hanger over. They didn't even activate the effect of Mausoleum to get an extra normal summon or send a normal monster. They didn't do anything. <laughs> That was, uh, that was interesting. Okay, um, yeah, they're gonna set a monster. Okay, that's, I, Bistial Magnum is fantastic right now, because, obviously, Blue Eyes and the other stuff. So, we're gonna go in Ari Fire here, go to Battle Phase. Now, I understand that it's very possible that this is a stone, but I'm comfortable with it being a stone, because we have Bistial Magnum. So, I don't care if it's a stone, it's not a stone. Okay, that's not good. This only drops attack, we're taking 500 damage, it's over. Um, uh, yeah, that's nothing we could do there. I'm gonna go ahead and Sarketsu Armor. I'm gonna set that. I'm gonna set the Shrink. I'm not gonna bother setting the Dragoodies because I might need the discard later. And I'm just gonna end on this. This should be good enough. Uh, so we've got Shrink, Sarketsu, and Ari Fire. And Ari Fire does float. So, yeah, if it's destroyed by card effect, it floats. And then Sarketsu, obviously, and Shrink. So we have pretty good stuff here. And then if we need to, we have the follow up with the Lightning Storm Vortex, I mean. Our opponent's going to set one card and pass here, which I am fine with, I guess. I mean, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, we're going to draw Crusadia Arborea, which will allow us to start playing. I mean, that's that's good. Uh, I can destroy this and start doing stuff, but I mean, so we can go into Crusadia a Avermax here and search Tiamon. We should do that. I think we should do that. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that's a dumb play. We go into Crusadia and then search... Yeah. Oh, no, we can't do that because we'd have to discard something for for this anyway. Because he has no lights engraved and neither do we. I mean, we could banish our own, but I'm not trying to banish our own. 
So I'm not going to do that play. I think I'm just going to go maybe Time Thief. Or I can go Time Thief or the other dude. I can go into this dude right here instead of Time Thief. So I think I'm just going to go this dude instead of Time Thief. So I'm going to normal summon that. I'm going to go into Zeta. Yeah, I'm going to go Zeta. Zeta is right now, he's pretty good. He's 25 and he can put an interruption on board, which I like. Um, and we'll just keep saving. We'll keep saving the Vortex for later. So now we go to battle phase. We can definitely get over this thing now. And we do have the Bestial Magnumut, which I, I think I saved the Bestial Magnumut. He can activate that, but he doesn't. I think we saved the Bestial Magnumut, all things considered, against Seto Kaiba here. And we just pass, yeah. I, I'd rather save it just in case he has a stone or something. I think it'd just be a better card. But then again, Zeta's really good against like his deck here. It's just really good. It's good against um, Jet. If he gets into Jet, Jet is really, really strong. And uh, Zeta actually does beat Jet. Like, we actually have the out. He's one of the most annoying cards in all of Blue Eyes, but we somehow actually do have the out. He's going to normal summon Sage. And he's going to be able to search a stone. Uh, again, that's fine with me. But the whole point is I'm trying to avoid... He's going to search Maiden, actually. Oh, yeah, he didn't search a stone. He searched Maiden. And he's going to activate Monster Reborn. He's going to target, I imagine, the Wyvern. And now would be a good time to Bestial Magnuma. Because then we get to burn a card. Um, yeah, we get to essentially negate Monster Reborn. And then we get to banish a card. And then we get to summon. And then we get to search. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot to do. And then I'm more scared of this card than I am this card so i'm just going to summon this here and when i search tiamon i get to pop this card here so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i get to search for free at the end phase and he's at we have 5,000 damage on board if we can get just a little more damage here we could essentially game this he's going to go to end phase beautiful exactly what we wanted we're going to resolve the effect to search we're going to search i should yeah tiamon is probably tiamaton is probably the best one to search here. He's kind of uh, really good. See, if I had Barone, Rocket Caliber would be the answer. But obviously, right now, this is this is the easy answer here. And I think that's actually game on board. If if this isn't anything important, that's game on board. So let's check it out. Let's see. Let's see what he's got. And if, like I said, if it's not, yeah, if it's not anything important, we basically win here. Uh, so we're gonna set the memory loss right here. We're gonna activate. Tiamaton, which just got support recently, kind of cool. Uh, summon this here, blow up this column, see if he has a response. He doesn't seem to. It is called by the grave, okay. And then we normal summon this out, and that is game on board. It's 8500, okay. So that's game. I'm not gonna time thief because I, Blue Eyes doesn't typically play stuff that like. Blue Eyes doesn't typically play like. Karibo and stuff like that. I mean, that'd be a huge disrespect to Kai, but I hope this guy isn't doing that. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and attack over all this. Very odd deck. I, mean, I can't wait to look at this one afterwards because that was like an interesting deck to say the least. He had like cards you never expected to all be played. He's playing like a like a Kaiba structure deck, uh, and that's it. That's game. Wow. Okay, that was a that was a clean one. He could have played that a lot better, but I mean, that was that was certainly interesting all right this is going to be the last opening of the, the the episode we've got three packs here so for the people who love seeing the the deck this is the deck he's playing he's got uh blue eyes deck he's got obviously the new royal rare this thing looks so cool i can't wait to buy it on my main account um then he's got some buster dragon pieces here which if he got into he could have been in trouble union driver he's got alternative he's got blue eyes jet obelisk the tormentor he's literally playing just a straight up kaiba deck with one obelisk but multiple obelisk support cards and then he's got enemy control this deck seems honestly like kind of fun to play i'm not gonna lie this is a deck that i would love to like sit down and maybe get like a like a yugi yugi dark magician slash magnet warrior deck sit down and have a couple of games like this actually looks like a really fun deck to play if i'm gonna be honest with you maybe not the, oh yeah i forgot this is legal i uh, maybe not the most optimal deck in the world but this is like it looks like a lot of fun i'm not gonna lie and he's got this royal rare too which is kind of cool right, let's open our last master pack of the episode here it doesn't seem to be glowing at all we have, we've got a lot of glowers today uh, they were glowers, but they weren't uh, usable cards for us for the most part. But they've been uh, they've been glowing, that's for sure. 
Wing Recruital is a good card. Uh, it definitely is. Pay 600 to draw two cards if you control two Wing Beast monsters with different names. Not a bad card, but again, we've been pulling so much Wing Beast support all of a sudden. Like, like, do we have to look in our Wing Beast stuff? Like, what's going on there? That's a good card. That is going straight in the deck. Like, that is no doubt about it going in the deck. This is essentially just a free special summon. It's going in every single deck that we have. It's a free special summon as long as we control nothing. And in our normal monster deck, this is actually really good. Uh, we don't have the Monk, but it doesn't matter because it's a free level 4 monster. So, regardless of the deck, it's just a free special summon. Infernity. We pull a lot of Infernity cards, too. Infernity, Reflector, Discard, Destroyed by Battle, Sent to the Graveyard, Inflict the Thousand. Uh, not that great. Uh, another Forbidden Chalice. This is probably going in the deck. That's really good. A Witchcrafter, Draping. I don't... Target Small Trap cards up to the number of Witchcrafters. We don't have that many. Return those to the hand. I, we don't have that many. Fallen of... Our gyros that's pretty cool okay this card is like oddly weird this is like is this sprite support i'm not really sure what this is it's a it's like a sprite card. it's like fallen of albaz mixed with sprite it's probably a part of the lore and i don't know about it but it's 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 a weird card you can detach one xyz you can target an xyz detach one or two materials from it that's like weird and then it uh it can shut off a link but most of the time you're pointed to your own links but basically if you control a link to level two or rank two you can special summon this for free which is essentially what it does uh orchestra which orchestrated returns pretty good but we don't have a lot of orcus cards or you can send an orcus or a world legacy card and then draw two cards not a bad card at all but we don't have enough and then Lapis Lazuli is a gem knight card okay so we've got this which is pretty good and the Hata is crazy it's really all right, let's look at these mat legacy tickets now. These are our last packs of the entire episode here. So we'll see what we get. We've got Magnet Circle Level 2. We can summon one Level 2 or lower machine from our hand. Okay. That's not going to be played, but we pulled it. That's a old, old card. Like probably Starter Deck Yugi. That old. Like, like Christmas Morning 2003 old. Uh, let's see what we got here. Alligator Sword, another copy. Not happening. Puppet Rook. Okay, so this card's kind of interesting. It's basically on normal summon. It sends a warrior to the graveyard, an earth warrior. And then your opponent has to attack this. When they attack this, we can send this to the graveyard. We can target a level high, f six or higher earth warrior monster in the graveyard. And special summon this card. And then change the target to the, the attack to that new card. Which is interesting, but I don't know what earth warriors we really have that are worth summoning. Actually, you know what we have? I think it's an earth warrior. That's level f uh, six or higher is actually remember the Amazonis that we used to play the Amazonis queen i believe that was a level six so interestingly enough again super slow combo probably not going to be played kind of interesting but i don't know because i haven't touched the warrior deck in a really long time uh, so we can summon this send Amazonis queen our opponent attacks this we change this and then we summon the Amazonis queen that can't be destroyed by battle and then our opponent is forced to attack it it's so honestly kind of cool, uh, but again, it's a little bit, a little bit too slow for our current purposes right now because we're trying to get, you know, the gates, interruptions, and more importantly, remember, and more importantly, boxer. Look at that. When this card destroys an opponent's my battle, sends it to the graveyard, place one counter on it. This summons an Earth Warrior monster, also, not just Earth monster from the deck. Destroyed by Battle of Cardifact, Removal Encounter. So basically, it's a little bit complicated. It's a cool card. It's a box, and it's a boxer, but not really going to work. And then we've got Mavilus, uh, which, again, is a good card. If I had Ready Fusion, I would definitely play that, because that is a, this is a generic level 4. You just play Ready Fusion, summon this, and then you go into Time Thief. I would 1 million percent do that if I could, but I don't have Ready Fusion. All right, so this is the end of the episode. There's a lot of decks that I'm very curious about whether or not we can play. The Warrior deck is very curious. I might try to give it a, tr a chance next time because we've got a lot of stuff like Colonel C and, like I said, we've got Goblinburg. Pull a lot of cards. This is crazy. Nahat is crazy. I'm definitely going to play that. I don't know how... This is still our best deck without a doubt. 100% this is our best deck because it's just got so many good things. Uh, the Warrior deck should definitely be interesting. Nahat is definitely going in the deck. I'm going to see what I'm going to take out. I'm not sure yet. I'm definitely going to play another copy of World Forbidden Chalice because this card's been putting in work too. So I have to kind of rearrange the deck, see what I have to cut because I definitely have to cut some stuff. Obviously, I can't just play 8 million cards. I got I to gotta sit. I got to make sure we see Vidjom and there can only be one in the, in the Fire Barrier statue. But overall, this has been a pretty crazy episode. It's probably in terms of how many hollows we pulled. 
I mean, look at the hollows we pulled. Every pack had hollows except for last pack. Every pack, like look at this SR, UR. This episode's been SR. Even out of the legacy, SR, SR. This card goes in our normal deck. I gotta remember that. UR, UR. Like this has been bananas. Like this is still. We gotta pull that the Keystone or whatever, whatever the Nemesis monster. We need to see more URs, and this is not from a pull. But look, we pulled this. I mean, this is from last episode. But a lot. We pulled a lot of URs in this episode. Probably the most URs we pulled in one episode. I don't know exactly how many are usable, but if you guys have any ideas, let me know. And thank you for watching. La, 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 la.